Okay, I'm going to pick up right where I left off. I don't know what happened. Something just like glitched in the whole screen. I think it was because I was talking about that shit. <laughs> but I was saying how I was in Walmart. Like, let's say I'm in Walmart. I'm picking up right where I left off because I was in thought when that shit dropped. But let's say I own Walmart. I can't stop people at the door and say, listen, you can't leave and go across the street to Target. You don't have that choice. You're a Walmart customer. You're my customer. You can't just leave. That person look at you and go, I can leave if I wanted to. What are you talking about? It's my money. It's my choice. It's my decision. If I feel like walking over to Target, I'll go across the street to Target. That's why I tell folks, you've got to be sure, be sure that when you're talking to people in the car, they realize you are a passenger. You are a rider. You are not owned by Uber. You are not owned by Lyft. Nobody owns you. So for you to say, well, I, I'm a, I'm a Uber passenger though. No, you're not. You're a passenger, period. You're a passenger, period. What up, AJ? You're a passenger, period. So I'm one of those people that believes give a passenger a true choice. They always think they only have Uber and Lyft as their only choice. I say if you have another app in your city where you have Empower, if you have rides, if you got Hum, give them a choice. Say, hey, did you know that there's another another app out here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's another app. It's called Hum. And this is how much this ride will cost. Oh, well, shit, man, I'm paying $82 with this. Well, you could probably pay about $55. You don't have to pay $82. You could probably pay $55 and be done. And a driver would take the whole $55. Driver gets the whole $55. With Uber and Lyft out of that $80, what are you going to get? $32, $33? That's it? Yeah, exactly. Green Cobras, that's what it is, man. Yo, yeah, transition those people. I'm telling you, Rob, that's what we're doing, man. We're just trying to educate people to get people to realize there are other ways of logistics out here. Just like if somebody goes to the post office, they can be at the post counter. They get at the post counter. Yeah, we get 100% of the fare. We get 100%. On home, you get the whatever they pay is what you get because you pay a subscription fee. Like cars, like sedans pay $30 a month. SUVs pay like $45 a month. But you pay a subscription fee, but you make your money back on the first ride. In many cases, you make a whole month's money back subscription because you you basically pay a dollar a day. So if you can't make a dollar a day using Hum, I mean, that says what kind of independent contractor you are. You're probably not a really good independent contractor. I can make a dollar a day. I know that because I'm a good salesperson. When it, If I'm out in these streets doing these rides, I can sell myself. If I'm letting Uber and Lyft sell me at a discount like a slave, I can't see the value in who I am and sell myself for more. I'm sorry. I can sell myself for more. I don't think Uber and Lyft are selling me correctly. They'll sell my car to somebody. Hey, $75 to leave the airport. $75 to leave the airport. Jeff, we're going to give you $26. That, no, we're, you're not giving me $26 out of this. If you're selling me for $75, then we need to sit down and talk about it. I'll take $50 out of it. I'll take If you're selling me for $75, I'll take $50. No, no, we're going to give you like $26, $30 out of that. You know what? I'll sell myself. I'm good at it. These motherfuckers got luggage. I'll load the luggage. I'll take them to where they got to get to in a nice, clean-ass car. I'll pull you off the app. You're riding on Hum now. You're not on Uber because Uber's not selling me right. I'll sell me right. You're going to pay a little less. I'm going to get paid a lot better. You're getting the exact same service. Man. This is really good. I may need you for a ride or two. I'm in Tempe. That's why I do something, Diff. That's what's up. Yeah, like I said, just hit me up. Hit me up. I'm always around. Well, not when I'm live streaming or doing videos, I'm not around. Or if I'm asleep, I'm not around. But I'm always around. <laughs> Man. Yeah, yeah. Not under the influence. That's, yeah, because it was like, you know, I've said it in many videos. With Hum, you get 100% of the fare because that's how it's set up. That's how it's set up. Uh, uh, send me an email. Let me let me type an email. In. This is my email right here. Uh, UberJeepAZ at gmail.com. I didn't put it in the uh, the chat. I mean, I didn't put it in the, in the description. That's my email right there. So just shoot me an email. Yeah. But, damn it. Wait a minute. There, there it is. There it is right there. UberGPAZ at gmail.com. Cool. Just shoot me an email. I get the, the specifics of whatever's going down and, and we'll get it worked out. We'll get it worked out. Yeah, but like I, and I, like I was saying before the drop, you've got to let customers out there know, let riders know, you have a choice in this world. Do not think Uber owns you, Lyft owns you, the post office don't own you. If you go to the post office, you're like, damn, it's $65 to ship this box. Yeah, $65. Well, FedEx is saying $29 for this box. Well, go to FedEx then. That's what they'll say. 
but they can't hold you at the counter going, well, since you walk through the door and you're at the post office, you can't leave. You got to pay the 65. You can't leave the post office. Once you come to the door, you're our customer now. And I'm like, so that means Uber and Lyft are the same way. We're independent contractors. And they say we're not their employees. They say we're not their agents. We don't sell anything for them. We engage with them. We don't sell nothing for them. So if you, somebody get in my car saying, man, I'm paying $85 for this ride. And I have a way that I can do it for cheaper. I'm going to tell them the options. You have options. You don't have to pay 85. Actually, you could probably pay 60 and be done. What? 60? Yeah. Here's an app. It's called Hum. I do it. I just get your phone number. You download that real quick. This, we'll get it done. I can do a cash route real quick and be done. I used to do that shit before Hum. I did it. And all these motherfucking YouTubers that want to talk about shit being local. Oh, it's local. It's local. They show the fuck was talking about me like a dog. Oh, people are doing rides without insurance out there. People, but y'all motherfuckers worried about that. They worried about that. But you don't want to worry about it once we have insurance and doing it. They don't want to talk about it now. Because they, they had good content talking shit about me when I was doing rides without hum. Oh, well, you know that they never said, well, you know what? What Jeff's doing is local. That's local. We don't worry about that. He's doing that in Phoenix. He's doing that in Phoenix. I'm not worried about that. He's That's local shit. That's not here. We're not doing that here. They ain't never say no shit like that. But yet the moment we doing something and we have a solution to what we were doing, these motherfuckers got crickets. They ain't saying a fucking word. Oh, well, that, uh, that's because it's only in Arizona. You know, they only doing it there. You know, they're not doing it here. No, we, we've been talking about this. We've been talking about cash rides. We still doing cash rides. We just doing them on hump. We're doing it with insurance on our under our belt. So I don't want to talk about that shit no more because it, it fucks them up now to see that I've been telling people, know your worth, get your private client stacked up. The whole time I got my private client stacked up, guess what I did? They're all hum people now because now I used to roll around with them with no insurance, just my car insurance. That was it. Now I move their ass all over. And I've been doing it for you. Like I said, I've been doing this shit since I was a kid. I've been doing Uber and Lyft since I was, what, 2019. So I've been doing cash rides since 2019. I've been doing hum since this year. So from 2019 to 2024, I've been doing rides just fine. No, perp no problem with my insurance. Just everybody's giving me money. We're all doing good rides. Everything's going good. Just a system came out to where they say, hey, Jeff, all the people you've been doing for five years like that on your insurance, move them over to ours. Okay, cool. How much? Dollar a day. Okay, cool. Let's go. Yeah, of course he was a <laughs> Jeff. Thank you for keeping it one hundred. Others aren't speaking like I do. I appreciate you. Thanks for that influence. And I'm and I'm real, man. I'm real with it. I'm real with it because I ain't never made a video that's about no shit that I can't back up. I ain't never made a video about no shit when I've made a mistake. I've said I made a mistake when I come saying, "Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing." And a lot of people don't like that about my channel because. I've never had to fake it to make it through shit. I've had beef with people. Cool. I'm always going to have beef with people. I mean, you, you, you have beef with your own brothers and sisters. You had fights with them in the fifth grade, fights with them in the seventh grade, fights with them as a senior, fights with them as an adult. When you got people in your life, you're going to have disagreements with them, especially if they stay in your life. You're going to have disagreements because they're around to disagree. So just because, you know, I didn't disagree with this guy or I don't disagree. Don't mean one day we might disagree. It might just be a disagreement and not a true fight. It's just a disagreement is all it is. And I disagree with a lot of people right now with how Phoenix, how Phoenix is being treated. What up, Taz? Thank you, brother. What? Well, here's a tip and I've been making around AK day trade, barely been delivering anymore. Drop shipping, bringing passive income, loving life. Hey, there you go, brother. There you go. I love that, man. I love that. You, you out there doing it, Taz, man. Hey. Sometimes you got to go out there and get it different. You got to get out there and get it different. But see, and, and I've, I've said that, you know, even if I disagree with people, it's just a disagreement. And I disagree with how people right now are viewing a solution that we're doing in Phoenix. And it's a lot of people who are on YouTube who just users, some are channels. But I think that the truth of what I'm seeing because I've been talking about hum since we started, you know, waste management. And I, like I said, I even talked down about it. Motherfuckers can go back, look at those comments. I talked down about hum back then because I didn't understand what I was doing on hum. I said, I'm not getting no pings on this app, man. This app is slow. I don't think this motherfucker even works, man. I don't know. I got it running in the background, this and that. I didn't understand. Nobody ever sat down with me about hum. Somebody just told me, you should sign up for hum, Jeff. So I signed up for hum and I did it. But yet, Nobody explained to me how hum works. What can I use hum for? Nobody ever told me that. I'm one of the only people who tell you what hum is, how you can use it, how it works, why it won't ping, but how you can make all this fucking money. I made 240 off of one guy. 
and I never got a single ping off of him. And he's all in hum. How did I get $140, $240 off of one guy and it never pinged? Because that's not what hum is. It's not Uber. It's not Lyft. You're not going to get pings. You got to make fucking pings. So when you make pings and you're a good driver, you know you're a good driver. You got this motherfucker sitting in your back seat saying, man, just like Big Horn Kev. I just gave Kev, like I said, 20, uh, 30, $40 ride every day. 30, $40 ride every single day, Monday through Friday. I gave it to him. It's his deal to work. But I got that guy through Lyft and I converted him over to Hum. And now he's on Hum with Kev now. Hum's not going to ping. You got to know all these people are indoctrinated to think ride share is Uber and Lyft. You're dealing with an indoctrinated base of fucking people who don't even know what you really do. They think because you got this nice ass car, you must be getting paid real well. They have no idea the $40 they just paid, you getting $13 out of it. They have no idea. You got to educate people. Educate people. And when I'm sitting there educating people and they in my backseat, they're like, wow, man, I didn't know that. They steal tips. Damn, you only getting that on the fair? Damn, man. You got to educate people. So when I educate them, and not only can I educate people now, but I can educate them and transform them with a single fucking card with a QR code. Hey, here's Hum. You ain't got to use this shit. If you don't see a driver on Lyft or Hum, if you don't see him because ain't nobody probably online or what is it, that's cool. Use Uber, use Lyft. But make sure you tell that driver, hey, man, you ever heard of Hum, dude? You ain't got to be doing this shit on Uber and Lyft. Make the riders, the riders become salespeople for Hum when they find out how easy it is, how good it is, how much money they save. They sell Hum to another fucking driver because I educate the rider the whole time. I tell them about Uber, Lyft, the ride share industry, and why I like Hum and why I think I'm an independent contractor that should be using Hum. I tell them that because they need to know that. When I make videos. I explain it. I break it down. I tell people exactly what I feel, how I feel, why I feel that way. Because if you don't understand it, you're going to be just like that dude that was in my comments. You say, I tried FAIR, signed up and got nothing in my area, but they were new at the time. After a month, I let them go. Yeah, I don't know how FAIR works. Like I said, you don't hear nobody talking about FAIR. Nobody does ride-alongs. Nobody does anything with them. So you got to, yeah, I'm about to change the game once they become national. I'm telling you, dope boy. And they're looking at growing. Like I said, we talk Saturday and they want to expand into other markets because they believe that they have an app that so many independent contractors can use. You can't even call us drivers. We're independent contractors. You never have to drive for Lyft or drive for Hum ever. I mean, drive for Lyft or for Uber ever. You can go straight to Hum and say, I was educated on how to use this app. I got to ride every day to work. You can actually use Hum. To if let's say you want to carpool with people in your neighborhood every day because they want to say, well, carpooling is illegal. You can't pay people to give you a ride. You can't. Oh, carpooling is not illegal. We've been doing it forever. But people want to say it's illegal. Paying people for rides is illegal unless you got a permit, unless you got commercial insurance. You can't carpool because that's paying for a ride. Oh, thank you, Under Influence. I appreciate it, brother. Oh, I'll be on it, man. I'll be on it. <laughs> so it's like, and I'll tell you, with this app, it allows somebody who's not even a driver to basically have commercial insurance if they want to drive people. Let's say you want to take people to games all day, you, your kids and their friends and they're to games all day. If you got the Hum Roger app, the parents give you $40 for taking their kids to the basketball game every day. Guess what? You're on Hum's commercial insurance, driving kids to the game. You're not an Uber driver. You're not a Lyft driver. You're an independent contractor. You tell these parents, hey, give me 40 bucks. I'll take your kids. Okay. And what do you do? You just go enter in one of the parents' phone numbers in the app and hit start ride. At that moment, you're covered with commercial insurance. And all they did was give you 40 bucks. And you drive and you hit in ride. It transfers to hum. It's got calculations and data in hum, but you already got your 40 in your hand. This is a different app. Like I said, when I first signed up for hum, I didn't know how it worked. You got a lot of motherfuckers in the comments. Well, I read the website and it says this and it says that. Motherfucker, do you drive hum? No, but I read. Talk to a driver, dog. It's not what you think it is. It's not what this motherfuckers is indoctrinated on Uber and Lyft. It's not what you think it is. Because I can drive up to anybody right now, Uber, Lyft, anybody, somebody just standing on the curb, and I can put them on commercial insurance and transport their ass across town, get paid what I say. If I say, hey, man, it's crazy traffic and shit right now. This shit is nuts right now. I'll tell you what, give me 75 bucks, I'll take you over there. All right, bet. Because Uber right now is charging, you know, 100. Lyft is charging 130. Yeah, 100 bucks, out to 75 dollars, I'll take you over there. What's your phone number? Doo -doo -doo -doo. Start ride. They're on commercial insurance, I got my 75. Ain't no other app doing that. There is no other app allowing you to be that level of an independent contractor. Chris Higgins, what's up, brother? 
Hopefully you got some riders in your car so they can hear about, you know, new shit coming down the pipe and be like, oh, we didn't know y'all was getting played like that with Uber and Lyft. Oh, yeah, we getting played. We getting played. What up, Bighorn Kale? And I'm, I tell people all the time, man, if you're going to sit up there and, and call yourselves an independent contractor and Uber and Lyft is going to call us independent contractors, they should allow us to at least set our price. They should at least allow us to set what we'll do because there's no reason why I should be, you know, competing with a Chevy Cobalt and I got a nice ass BMW. There's no reason I should be competing with them. Not price. And I don't mean competing like I want to beat you. I want to beat you. I mean, the prices have to be competitive. If you got a black SUV, I expect you to make more than me. An SUV should not be on my level. A black SUV taking five or six people should be up here. I have a little four seater BMW. So when I'm saying competing, I mean the prices, not the two people, you know, trying to beat each other. What? No. So you should have a Chevy Cobalt next to a fucking clean ass BMW going, OK, which one you want for twenty five dollars? I mean, the person going to say, oh, I'll take the BMW if it's twenty five dollars. Hell, yeah, I'll take it. What's the driver getting? Nine, eleven. No, it should be like, OK, you want the Chevy Cobalt? You want the BMW? Or do you want the black Yukon? Which one do you want? You got three levels. You could pay 25, you could pay 45, or you could pay 75. Which level you want? That's how it should be as an independent contractor. But they don't do us like that. Lux got rid of all the tiers. Everybody got rid of all the tiers to make everybody even across the boards. So the only choice a person has is if you want a shitty car, or you want a good car. They're all the same price. And it's like, no, we're not. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. On Hum. I can roll up and I can say 45. They look at my car. Oh, it's definitely because I'm a Lux driver. Lyft don't call me Lux. Uber don't call me Lux. But I call me Lux. So when I'm on home and when I'm doing a private ride, I'm a luxury car. I got the amenities for a luxury car. I don't give a fuck what Lyft call me. What? Oh, well, I can't charge you Lux prices because Uber and Lyft did away with the Lux category. So I'm just a basic car. Fuck them. I don't listen to them. They want you to listen to them. They want you to walk around with your tail between your legs thinking you don't have a Lux car. They want you thinking that shit every day. When I walk out the house, I got a luxury car. And people say, well, why do you drive Uber and Lyft if you know they got your own base platforms? I'm like, where the fuck you think I'm getting my clients from? I'm a smart motherfucker. You paying me to market now, Lyft. Lyft paid me $1,300 last week to market myself. Lyft paid me $1,300 last weekend to market myself. Uber paid me $113 to market myself. You don't think I sell myself to all these fucking people? When you get in my car, you're, you're paying me right now. See, I tip you $20, but Lyft and Uber said 1501 tip and service charge. Yep, Jesse, real shit. Service charge on the tips, that part. Service charges on the tips. Man. The under the influence. What is it? Yo, did a hum ride Saturday? Did exactly what you said with the phone number. $55 to 12 miles. Lyft Black was charging 70 there you go, Juan. There you go, man. And, and that's how you get it, man. That's how you get it, Juan. You got to know how to use this app, man. You got to know what this is an opportunity, man. You can easily be like, listen, I'll do this ride for this price. And they'll be happy. OK. So you're truly saying how I've been feeling about Uber and Lyft. That'll just me because I don't take BS rides. No, we don't around here, brother. We don't, man. We don't do shit rides. No. See, why don't they let them drivers add video files of them showcasing their cars? And see, and Rob, this is what I think. These all these apps, I think uh, Hum does it, but all these apps should actually show a true picture of what our car looks like, not a cartoon picture and not a thumbnail of like a stock picture. No, it's like we're talking about having actual cars, my car on there. Say, so, say, so AZ need minimum earning guarantee 13, 14, 50 an hour ain't enough. Who's making 14, 50 an hour, bro? I just Sam Lee. I I think Sam Lee is a, a different driver. I think he's a pigeon, man. He's a pigeon driver. Because Sam, I, Sam, you weren't here a second ago. I'll tell you what we make in Arizona. Because you, all right, let's show what we make in Arizona. Let, let, let's show Sam Lee. All right, 23 hours, 23 hours and four minutes, $1,300. So where are you saying $14.50 an hour, Sam? I don't know. I, I know you was on Robert Reese shit talking shit a minute ago, so I'm going to give you a pass on this one. But you come over here talking shit, you're going to get blocked off my channel. And not off my, I'm just going to silent you because I don't like when people come talking shit on my channel. I told you already, Arizona don't fuck with you. We don't even like you. I told you that to your face. I said, we don't like you. So when you come to my channel, you taking a risk. You bringing that shit over here. I don't even fucking like you. So don't, don't, don't do that. You running that risk right now. Keep that shit over on Robert Reese's channel. 
You keep that shit wherever you keep it. You bring it over here. I already don't like you already. So you over here just because I'm being nice right now. Don't bring that shit over here. I'm one of them people, man. I'm one of them people. I don't fuck around. You don't come up. We, we doing something different over here. We doing something different. You bring that energy over here. I kick that shit up out of my room. I don't do that, man. And and you should know that because I've said that enough fucking times. You know who I am. You ain't new to me, motherfucker. You know me. It's like, yeah, man, I don't fuck with people like that, man. I don't fuck with people like that. It's like he was doing that shit on Robert Reese channel the other day. I told you Arizona don't like you. We don't fuck with you. Go back to where you come from. We don't like your energy. So keep your ass the fuck up out of Arizona. But you don't come in here talking shit about our market. We know we got a shit market. We know we busting our ass to do it. We don't need you going around promoting that shit. I'll block you off my fucking channel. I don't play that shit. We working on something over here and you ain't in that fucking mix. That's Sam Lee, dude. I don't know who the fuck he is. He's some random ass fucking dude who go around YouTube talking shit about people, markets and shit. Man, he's one of them people. One of them. I don't fuck with that, man. I don't fuck with that. Man, I'm telling you, we over here trying to get money. Oh, Arizona needs a minimum. Arizona, man, get the fuck off my channel with that shit. We don't play that. We over here getting money. Juan Vargas, what was that? $55 for 12 miles? $55 for 12 miles. How, how long did it take you to go those 12 miles? Definitely not a fucking hour. Definitely not an hour. We don't we don't do minimums over here because you can look at all my prior videos. I say in my videos, when you think minimum, you make minimum. I've said in videos, see, Sam Lee don't watch my shit. He don't watch my videos. He come over here talking shit. Watch my video. I said, if you think minimum, you make minimum. Target fixation. I've talked about that in so many of my videos, just like motorcycles. Where you look is where you go. Look at $100 an hour. You end up at $100 an hour. Don't come over with no $14 an hour minimum shit. Don't do that. Not on my channel. Because like I said, I'll remove you up out of my shit, man. I'm like that. I'm like that. This is one of those channels. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, man. He He's a, a fucking delivery driver. Over to, oh, well, I'm 14. Well, go back and do what you do, dog. Don't come over here selling that bullshit. Don't do that. Don't come over here selling that. We don't do that. So it's like, man, this is 1457 hour. I'll make that in one ride. Get that bitch ass shit out of here. For real, man. For real. Shit, 1457 is a tip we get on what we do. <laughs> it's like, don't come over here with that bullshit, man. Come over here with that shit. We don't do that over here, man. Like I said, this is a real channel. And any, like everything I've just said right now, it's nothing new. Everybody who's on this channel knows how I rock. They know how I roll. I don't go to nobody channel and fuck with them. I don't do that because that's not my personality. I told you, you got constructive energy. You got destructive energy. You have those two type of people. I'm constructive. I'm going to always come around and help build people up. I'm going to come around and come up with solutions. I'm not here to destroy your energy. I'm not here to destroy your morale. I'm here to tell you the truth and the facts and to go out there and fucking get it. When a destructive person comes along, I fucking get rid of them because I know how I roll. I've been doing this shit for 50 fucking years. I don't like destructive people. So when people say, oh, Sam Lee, I don't like Sam Lee. I just don't. It's just I don't like his personality. I don't even know to do. I just don't like him. And it's OK. It's seven billion motherfuckers on this planet. Seven billion. I don't have to like everybody. Sam's just one of them. I don't like him. And, I'm, and like I said, I'm not a gossipy person where somebody goes, oh, man, Jeff said he don't like. No, I'll tell Sam Lee his fucking face. I don't like him. It's cool. He can go do his own fucking thing. Go, you know, whatever he's been doing for the last 50 years of his fucking life, however old he is, keep going and doing it. You don't have to be around me. You ain't got to come around me because I ain't around you and I'm doing cool. I just don't like you. Yeah, man. I don't, like I said, I don't like everybody, but I've said that shit before. And when people rub me the wrong way, I'm a, I'm a big energy person. And I don't like motherfuckers, man. I just don't. When I don't like somebody, you will know because I'll tell you to your face I don't like you. You ain't got to guess. I just don't like you. Oh, man, do you know if Jeff like you or not? Well, I know he don't like me because he told me that. Or for real? Yeah, he just told me he don't like me. For what? I don't know because he just don't. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, I ain't got to. I don't have to have a reason that I like you. I just don't like you. I don't feel you. It's like, man, he's like an old fucking pigeon. The fuck on up out of here. We don't pull that shit around here, man. And, and, and like I said, he can go to other channels and pull that shit because some channels are set up for that. My channel it is about. You know, being a true independent contractor, really going out there and building a business, being building for yourself. Oh, man, I've been good, man. I've been good, man. All good. All good, brother. And, and we come up and we try to tell people, even though we know these apps are trying to fuck us over every day, every day. 
Oh, Bighorn Kev. Oh, thank you, brother, for the super chat, brother. Thanks for the new client, by the way. Three hundred looking out for you. And see, that's Kev. See, that's that's the thing. I hooked him up with a. I was telling y'all, I hooked him up with a client because the guy was on Lyft and he has to drive the Coca Cola every day, leave Coca Cola, go back home every day, and because he wrecked his car, so now his wife uses the truck. But he was somebody who I knew. We can actually not get him stuck on the plantation. We got enough drivers in the three hundred that could take care of the situation. So him and Kev, you know, they're going to be negotiating deals based on traffic patterns, based on this and that. That's his client to work with now. Now he's going to work with him. So he's off Lyft. He's off Uber. Now he's Kev's guy now. And this is how we take care of each other. We don't we don't target fixate on on what the government is going to set for us as a minimum wage. Fuck that. We're looking for a client base. My focus is on building a client base. That's my focus. Even before I had hum, I was always focused on building a client base. Because the people who pay you every day, and y'all knew I used to have a client, she ended up buying a car, but I took her to work like three months. Every day I would take her to work, you know, $15 quick ride in the morning. Every, I didn't even have hum. She wasn't even on hum. She was just one of my cash clients. I've always been that way. So when you come to this channel, I'm going to help you figure something out. And a lot of channels out there, like I said, they want to talk shit about me. Oh, insurance, insurance, insurance. But yet when we talk about a solution, they ain't nowhere to be fucking found. These motherfuckers are silent on the matter. It's like, yeah, managed service agreement all day long. That's it. That's it. A managed service agreement. That's all it is. Yeah, there it is. I'm on the verge of closing some big deals, some very big clients. There you go, brother. There you go. And that's what it is, man. That's the type of channel we own over. We're a true independent contractors channel. We ain't on no bullshit over here. We don't deal with that over here. So it's like there's channels for that. This does not happen to be one of them. And I want everybody to go out there, be able to afford, if you want to go get livery insurance, do it if you feel like me. I've been doing it since I was 15. I never felt that I had to buy livery insurance. Never did. Never did. Never bought commercial insurance. I never did. Because I was one of those people that just said, I know how I drive. I know when to drive, where to drive. I don't wreck fucking cars. I mean, look on my record. I don't wreck fucking cars. So a lot of people, man, thank you for the super chat. Do something different. Appreciate that. Oh, definitely. And, and like I said, hit me up, man, in the email. So we can get you squared away. We're going to get you squared away. And I'm like, if, if somebody wants to generate money, you cannot generate that money on Uber and Lyft in order to afford a different level of insurance. Just like Jamil. Jamil's got a lot of clients, and that's why he can afford commercial insurance. He can afford, you know, the LLC set up for the airport and all the shit he got. He can afford that because he's not only Uber Lyft. The guy built a solid client base. He built this client base so good. Like I said, he gave Bighorn Kev one of his clients the other day. The same day he gave me the $70 client. Because he had another guy. His book is full. And when your book is so full, your plate is so full that you can start feeding people around. That's how I ended up giving Kev this client. Because when your plate starts getting full, you start giving to your circle around you. You start giving, you support the people that support you. And I'm like, dude, this is how we eat out here in Arizona. We're different. We don't all ride each other and talk down on each other and try to talk shit to each other. And isn't we don't do that. That's some Sam Lee shit. That's not what we do over here. We come over, we build each other up. We say, hey, man, how can I help? What you got? What, what's going on, man? What's this and that? And we build people up. And I'm one of those people that truly believe that Uber and Lyft, the, the true competition of Uber and Lyft is us, strong drivers. Weak competition is people like Sam Lee because he's always going to be an app person. He's always going to be delivering fucking hot dogs for the rest of his fucking life. Motherfucker going to be 80 years old dropping fucking pancakes and shit. He's going to always be that person. Me, if I'm 80, oh, I'm driving a big-ass fucking Suburban. I'm cruising it. Fuck that shit. I'll be enjoying my motherfucking life. Nobody in that motherfucker. I done stacked all my money. I'm keeping my Suburban. I'm driving that motherfucker everywhere. I ain't worried about that shit. Then I will not retire. Be no 70, 80, 90 fucking years old on fucking canes and shit, crutches and shit, trying to drop off some motherfucking IHOP to somebody. I'm not trying to do that. But Uber and Lyft will push you to that point. They don't give a fuck about you. So why do I sit there and promote and pump these fucking apps? I don't. I don't talk about, you know, I hope they start paying us. No, I don't hope they start paying us shit because the shitter they pay us, the more we become private drivers, the more we become true, true independent contractors. Exactly. I'm delivering pieces. <laughs> Roger, Lisa, I'm delivering pieces over here, motherfucker. <laughs> but that's my thing. Be a true. And, and Roger, Lisa, I'm going to tell you like this. You should be having so many good clients, especially for like catering offices and dinners and lunches. There's people out there right now, you know, ladies, 60, 70, 80 year old ladies making entire fucking spreads, getting dropped off $700 cash. Ladies cooking all fucking macaronis, this and that greens. I mean, whole fucking spreads getting $1,300 invoices paid, $1,500. In 
there's big money in delivery. There's big money in catering. But when you got little minded motherfuckers talking about you guys need a minimum of $14. Like what? What? Who the fuck is this dude? Get him off my fucking channel. You guys need a minimum 14 motherfucker. We trying to get a $1,400 invoice paid. What the fuck you talking about? We big money energy over here. You can use delivery as a stepping stone and saying, hey, man, I didn't know y'all office do this every weekend. Y'all do this every weekend. We do this every weekend. Well, let me cater it. Let me cater it for y'all. This is my card, man. Let me cater it. What up, James? Sometimes my brother's available. I may need someone else for help. I'm carless and looking for cars as I lost mine in the wreck. Oh, we got you do something different. We got you, brother. Like I said, we out all day. Out all day. Whenever we're not on live streams or this and that, we're out there. We out there. And that hourly talk is pigeon pay. <laughs> I like my eyes being mostly private. I'm telling you, man, keep that shit off my channel. Keep Don't bring that shit over here. Okay, cool. You already got the hum app? Bet, bet. Oh, yeah. Catering, Lisa, that's it. Catering, man, catering. Yeah, Juan, but this shit, like I said, we don't, I, like I, said, I don't think he watches my videos. I think he saw somebody was on live and decided to try to come over and, and say the shit that he's on. We ain't on that shit. You're wrong live stream, motherfucker. Wrong live stream. Take that shit to a pigeon live stream. Go sit on a pigeon fence with the rest of the fucking pigeons. That's the shit you want to put over there. You guys need a minimum 14 and out, motherfucker. Psh, please. Other day, what, uh, Bubba was driving. Rick over in Vegas was driving. He took some uh, MMA people the other day. Rick texted me. Motherfucker gave him $1,100 cash in his hand. Bam, 1100 private ride, 1100 cash just for driving a guy around town for a little bit. That's what we talk. This motherfucker come over in the house and $14. You guys need a minimum $14 than that. If you don't get the fuck off my channel, don't come over here with that shit. I don't even like you. I want to be like Rick in Vegas. Get in my car and give me $1,100. Give me a stack. Man, I pre I just hit it big in the casino, man. I just want to be be gracious to a motherfucker. You came out here and picked me up from the talking stick, man. I just hit it for 10 G's up in this motherfucker. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, but see, Rob, you can't. That's the thing. You can bring food delivery over here. But if you want to do food delivery, I have a cousin named Kelly Cuts. My cousin Kelly Cuts never did food delivery. She's only worked in food her whole life. My cousin James Cuts, he's never did food delivery. He's worked in food his whole life. But these are entrepreneurial food people. They went from doing small things to opening barbecue restaurants. This is my family. This is who I come from. Open huge fucking barbecue restaurants over in Virginia. My cousin Kelly, I think she's down in Alabama. She's got, you know, her catering business. Like she's like Roger Lisa. She does nothing but catering. She does huge balloon spreads, food. She does tables, trays, order trucks and shit. When you want fucking money, when you want money, you know, $14 an hour is not what we own. That's not the shit we own. Oh, thank you. Jesse said, this channel is like a drug. Here's another $4.99 for another hit. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that, brother. Oh, welcome to the, welcome barbecue way to the prestige. Welcome to the barbecue prestige. Appreciate that membership. But see, really, and I was telling you, like my cousin Kelly and my cousin James, they both in the food industry. But when they talk about food, they talk about getting an invoice for three G's, five G's, you know, feeding an entire spread. And you can do that because you're locked into people who are doing catering. You're locked into them already, Lisa. All you got to do is get that business license because you can contract with other people to provide the food for you. You provide the service in the setup and they just pay for the contract. You ain't even got to do Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, none of that shit. This is food, your car and a setup. That's all it is. That's all it is. My cousin Kelly cuts, like I said, and the shit I'm saying on this live stream has to be for real. Has to because they can check me and say, Jeff, I've never owned a catering business. Why are you lying to these people? Kelly will go, Oh, I remember my catering business was little. It was little. She, I mean, she used to push shit on fucking Facebook and Instagram. I mean, like, you did that? A chocolate cake waterfall and shit. And you did the whole balloon spread for the wedding and, and the whole party. I mean, this girl spreads, it looked like a corporate office came and did that shit. That was my cousin doing that shit. Because she knows she ain't no Sam Lee motherfucker. She ain't on no $14 an hour shit. She want an invoice. That's my family. She want an invoice. So when you get stuck in this $14 an hour W-2 mentality, you need to move over to invoices. That's why I love when I do a hum ride. on the top. Anybody who does hum, at the top of every ride, it says invoice number. You can screenshot that shit and send it to anybody if they want to do it. Well, I, got, I need an invoice number for my company corporate office. Bruh, on hum, you get invoice numbers. Every ride you do has an invoice number across the top. On Uber and Lyft, you ain't got no invoice number. Uber and Lyft might send them an invoice number, but we're independent contractors. Should not be sending them invoice numbers as an independent contractor? Hum allows you to do that. Well, on my co corporate account, look, 
He's like, we need that somebody with that music around play that shit, boy. <laughs> you get that guy. A lot of it, he's not all oh, Reggie. Appreciate that, brother. But see, that's the thing. You know, we we talk, we discuss, you know, the 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 visibility of pigeons in ride share and why people think a certain way and they never become more than what they already are. They, they stay stagnant forever. They just stay stagnant. We over here building teams. We're building group people. See, I don't, that guy can only talk about himself and what he does. He can't talk about anything else. He talks about himself, what he does, what we talk about teams over here. We talk about the future. We talk about progressing in the other levels of business, how we're doing this and doing that. This motherfucker going to be driving around in a Prius with fucking Chinese food for the rest of his fucking life. That's as far as he's going to make it. That's it. Oh, but I got money. Motherfucker, I can get money. I got to do is go rob a 7-Eleven. Just because I got money don't mean I got it the good way. It just means I got money. I can go to a casino, hit a jackpot. I got money. That don't mean I did shit. I just hit a jackpot and got money. It don't mean I did nothing to get it. I just hit a jackpot. whoop de doo Money is money. I could go back to corporate and be an accountant if money was the play. Money is not the play to me. We're construction. We're, we build. We're constructive. We got criticism. We want to build teams. We want to build life, build systems, not be taken down by systems. If you sit around and allow yourself to be taken down by systems, you're just a slave. That's it. It's a plantation system. And you got to find some way to get out of that. Because imagine if delivery one day said, you know what? We're going to leave this region because they did it with ride share. They talking about that shit in Minnesota with ride share. What if they said, you know what? We're going to delivery is going to leave this region. Delivery is going to leave this region. Thank you for the super chat, hum. I appreciate that. Thank you. Worst case, cash, manual ride, something like charge for striping car. Yeah, instant pay invoice and swiping. Yeah, Square. I got Square now, CS. I finally got it yesterday. So Square is on my phone now. And it had all my old invoices from all my old shit, from like my mechanic business. But I finally put Stripe, a uh, square on my phone now. So I got square now. As of yesterday, I'm in. But Hum allows you to do that. They allow you to do that. Oh, and thank you for your first super chat, Percy. I just saw that first super chat. Thank you. And it's like, with, with invoices, that's how you can get people. That's how you can get people to say, well, I do this for a business. So I need a business write-off. I need an invoice. Motherfucker, invoice number at the top of everything. Print it out. It's, it's on your phone. You can print it out. You can do whatever you want to do with it now. This is how we make business out here. Yeah, right on. I'm so glad you got Square Big Horn. He's like, yeah, man, I got, because Jamil, the people you were trying to rock me with, they wanted to pay with Square. I didn't have Square. And that's why they gave me the, um, they gave me the $100 and I gave him back the 30 bucks. So I appreciate that, man. I just appreciate that, bro. Man, Jamil, you always taking care of us, man. That was a good lick. And that was the start of my day right there. So that was our first ride of the day. I had just gotten the car. And Jamil was like, Jeff, I'm at Sky Harbor. I'm like, bro, I'm on Broadway right now. Let me U-turn. <laughs> he called me. I'll, I'll U-turn that car so quick. I said, I'll be there in a minute. Tell him I'll be there in about five minutes. I'm on the highway now. Man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Do something. I appreciate that, man. And like I said, you, you're you're helping somebody who I don't mind helping other people. So I appreciate that. Do something different. Real shit. I appreciate that because I'm constantly in my bag trying to help other people get a bag. I'm not one of them people who just sit around bragging about what I got, what I got. No, I think we can all get we can all help each other in some capacity. We can. And even you, like you said, you need a car. I got people who got cars. You say, man, I'm looking for a car. I might got something for you. So you might do a couple of rides with me just on, you know, uh, hum or whatever like that. But I might hook you up with a car. And next thing you know, you're going to be on hum with us. You're going to be a driver with us. So that's how it works, man. That's how it works. Thank you, Rasha and Lisa. I appreciate the super chat. Jeff, I'm so glad you're here for the drivers no matter what we do. Real shit. Real shit, Lisa. I'm telling you. Because I understand that we're, we're contractors. We're doing something that's beneficial. We're doing delivery, catering, all that shit's a benefit because somebody needs it done. And a lot of people, they think it is, oh, it's just delivery. Trust me, you can build a whole business out of catering and delivery. You can, and you don't even need to do it on the apps. Cause like I said, I got two family members that do it. And they started saying, you know what? We're going to start real small. We're going to start with, a, you know, a customer here, a client here. They started promoting on Facebook. I do delivery. I do catering. They started promoting on Facebook. Next thing you know, it became a big business for them. And that's all they do now. Now they got people helping them. They got employees. They got, you know, shirts and uniforms and hats and everything. It, that's how it starts out, though. But you got to be willing to build it. And there's not a lot of people who are willing to build it. They only want to stay doing small things like Lisa does mainly catering. 
Because I see a lot of you guys Discord groups of like Rod Share Lisa has a Discord group called Rod Share Lisa. She's got a Discord group and they talk about a lot of delivery in there. They be having like eleven hundred dollars, you know, things, fifty five dollars here, seventy five. It'd be crazy numbers in there. And I'm sitting there like if, if I was doing delivery, that's where I want to be. This three dollars and forty nine cent shit. No. Four dollars and eleven cent. No, no. I'd want to be on Rasha or Lisa's Discord because that's how you find out how to get the big banging orders. You, if no matter what region, like Lisa might be local to her area, but her knowledge is transcending. It will go everywhere. It will go everywhere. So you can use what they talk about in your region and not be local. And that's why I like how they speak on her on her Discord. Everybody from all regions are on her shit. So you're getting knowledge on how to get more involved in catering and get away from the $3 orders, $4 orders. But you're getting away from that. You're moving into something bigger. Because I guarantee right now there's business parks all around me who have nobody doing catering for them. Guarantee it. There's one guy I picked up yesterday. He's a, a client for mine now. His name's Siler. Siler, they work for a company that gives them a $20 a day Grubhub stipend. $20 a day is what they get for Grub. They get $20 a day for Grubhub. The whole office gets it. Imagine catering to that every single day saying, I don't want to do no little piddly orders here and there. You want to deliver to something like that. Just find out how to get your business up together and say, I want to deliver to this office where are you guys ordering from. And I'm going to make sure I get all you guys order. They might say, OK, you're delivering for, you know, 18 people and each person is going to tip you 10 bucks. Cool. Because, I mean, they're getting a free twenty dollars. So it's basically like they're giving you 10 bucks out of their own pocket. They fuck around. You're making $180 for one drop. Bam. You just write the front desk, get everybody's food, write names on bags, or whatever the fuck this and that. There you go. Bam. Catering is big money. Catering is big money. But you got to get into that level, though. You got to get into that level. All no problem, Lisa. All good. All good. Like I said, I see the when I see all the notifications in the top, I'll be driving and I'll be going through you guys shit on, on Discord. I'll be like, God damn, y'all killing it. <laughs> and I'll be driving to a ride that's like $11. And I'm sitting there like, I could probably be catering right now. <laughs> that shit. But no, but that you got a good Discord channel. And I like the energy there too. Because there's on her channel, there's no fighting. When I sit there and I look at it and I see how everybody's talking to everybody and how everybody's like inspiring and pushing everybody to do something, that's the kind of shit I'm on. That's what I'm on. And that's why I'm not, I think you, I think I'm a part of two Discord. It's you or one Discord group. And then I'm a part of a gamers group that my son got me locked into. Those are the only two Discord groups I'm in. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not in no ride share groups, no shit, whatever. I'm in your group and a gamer group. That's it. So that's the only Discord shit I get is from y'all. <laughs> but it's like, but it's good energy, though. It's all good energy. So I love it. Just reading that shit and, and just being amped up enough to know that we're all independent contractors fighting for our money out in these streets with companies that have people in suits who don't want to pay us because we wear T-shirts. It's like, why should we be paying these people, you know, $400 a day, $500 a day when we got people in the office with degrees that don't make that much? Because the people in the office with degrees ain't out in these streets really doing the work. They sit at a computer thinking that degree is really worth something. That degree ain't worth shit. I know that because I got one. And they don't tell me, hey, Jeff, since you got an accounting degree, we should be paying you more on these rides because you're talking business with people and you're talking about accounting and financial stuff. We should be paying you more as being a, a degree driver. Degree don't mean shit. I make more money by driving, by chatting, getting my tips, conducting my, my business with my transactions. That's how you get money. That degree is a sheet of fucking paper that's probably somewhere around here covered with a fucking with something else. Who knows where it is? I don't even know where it is because it's not that important. <laughs> what's important is getting this fucking money. That's what's important. So at least you tell us to talk to us and give us fighting chance to make something happen in life. I'm telling you, Joker, man. And, and that's what it is, man. We, we have to have a chance. We can't end up like Minneapolis. And I don't say that shit in a mean way. I mean it in a serious way. We seeing what these apps have the potential to do. They can threaten you. They should be out of here in like 15 days, but now they moved it all the way up to July. They can threaten you, threaten your livelihood, threaten your whole region. We're moving out and, and you guys are going to just have a city with no drivers, no logistics, no way to get around. And all these customers are sitting around like, dude, I use this shit to get to work. Why do you think we're building private client bases? Why do you think I'm giving Bighorn Kev clients? Why do you think Jamil's giving me clients? Why do you think I'm passing DeAndre clients? We're creating our own network of drivers out here. Everybody, and I used to say, you can see all my old live streams. I tell every person out there should have at least four drivers in their phone. 
I said that shit a million times. I don't want to be your only option. Have at least four drivers in your phone because if I can't make it because I'm doing this right over here, call Kev. Kev can't make it. Call DeAndre. DeAndre can't make it. Call Billy Proctor. Billy Proctor can't make it. Call Jamil. Jamil's on his way. Have a lot. Do not use these plantation ass apps. We're a team of people. And we can like when I when them girls hit me up saying, hey, we, I got 10 girls and they know I got, ain't got shit with a BMW. And I was like, well, shit, let me see who I can find with a couple of SUVs. I hit up Jamil and DeAndre. Jamil's like, shit, I got a client. DeAndre's like, I could take six. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'll take the other four. I wasn't even going to be in the transaction. I was giving that to them. And all of a sudden, here we are. We're, we're doing business together, getting these girls around, moving things. That's how we have to be, though. If we want to be off the apps and do our own private shit. Uber and Lyft, have to, we got to slowly really work to get off these apps. We can't keep running to them all the time. They, the biggest safety is having partnerships with like-minded drivers to backfill your schedule. Yeah. And I'm telling you, CS executive, if you don't have people like that with you, it's going to be hard. Oh, um, thank you, Bighorn Kev. I appreciate that, bro. This is what true independent contractors are able to do because we don't set up for minimum wage. We set the wage. Real shit, brother. I appreciate that, Kev. Real shit, man. You guys take care of me today. I appreciate it. And you know, I'm always going to be kicking out clients to you, man, because Kev, he's one of those guys and he's on the, the good part of town. Like he's like Mesa and Mesa's right above Gilbert. So Mesa, Gilbert, Chandler, that me, I'm by the airport. And that kind of hams me up because we're working on the 143. They're working on the 10 right now. I live in that area. So everybody's using Southern and Broadway. So I'm stuck. A lot of times I can't even leave my house till later because Southern is busy. I can't get down Southern. Broadway is busy. So any of these drivers can be like, hey, you know what, Kev, he's in an open area. If they're not working on the 60, he can shoot down and grab my people because I'm I'm blocked in until they finish the 143 and the 10. I'm blocked in. I can't go nowhere. And I definitely ain't going on baseline. I'm really locked in. So like you said, CS, if, if we don't have other drivers to that's my safety right there, knowing that my business can do well because I got a Kevin. Because I got a Jamil, I know my business can do well. So I don't mind talking to new riders, build my private base because it's not my base. It's like a plate. And I'm looking at all the drivers eating off this plate I'm stacking right now. And everybody's like, Jeff, keep going out there and keep building business because they're all out there building business. We're just stacking the plate. If a driver, on, if a rider on that plate needs a ride, I got five or six people I can call if I can't even fucking get to them. So I'm not even worried about it. A lot of people are like, man, I can't take too many more clients, man. It's like my, my schedule's getting kind of filled up. We got you, though. Just like Kev told me this morning, he's his morning schedule's getting filled up, which means I'm glad he told me that because now I can start looking at like Jamil for morning schedule. Lawrence, he's over in that area. He can do morning schedules in that area. So we keep in contact with each other, letting them know when our book is getting filled up and we start moving clients in a different direction. Anything it takes to keep them off of this damn app. Anything. Yep, yep. Say, I'm in Tempe. I'm in baseline in Tempe. On base, uh, where are you at? Uh, can't see. I'm in baseline in Tempe around there. All right. When I meet people, they should be telling me about a driver they know in the areas. Not much about Uber Lyft ripping them off with this ride. Yeah, exactly. And that's the first thing they talk about. It's always that avoid baseline. Yeah, avoid baseline at all costs. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. They should, when I, everybody, like I picked up this guy named Wendell. He was a black dude I picked up from the airport the other day. His name's Wendell, and he lives in Scottsdale. Now, Wendell was like, hey, man, this is my second hum ride. I was like, he says, dude, y'all got nice cars on hum. He says, the first dude picked me up. He had a white Escalade. I was like, oh, that's Billy Proctor. He was like, oh, shit, you know him? I was like, yeah. He says, dude, that's funny how y'all drivers know each other. Uber drivers don't know each other. <laughs> I said, no, I said, if there's a white Escalade on hum, that's Billy Proctor. I said, because there's only like about 30, 40 of us. And he's only he's got the only one with the white Escalade. He was like, yeah, his name was Billy, man. He was a cool brother, cool brother. And so we just sitting there chatting or whatever. But it made him feel good that we knew somebody in common. He didn't have to jump in my car like Joker man said, talking shit about, man, these fucking apps. I mean, Lyft is ripping me off. Uber. He didn't talk about that. He jumped in. He was talking about the service itself, talking about how Billy's Escalade was clean as hell. He didn't believe he was getting picked up in an Escalade from the airport. He felt like an executive VIP walking out to this big ass white Escalade. That's how it should feel to these people. Then you jump in a clean ass BMW the next next time he might get in, you know, Jamil's aviator because that uh, always up at the airport he might get in Juan's S that that Model S one day. Like I said, these cars, man, they, they make people happy. And so they should be talking about drivers more than they're talking about how they just got ripped off by an app because it's like, man, I can't believe, you know, I just paid fifty five dollars to leave. This shit's usually like twenty two. 
people talk about that all the time. How do just like you know with that guy Gilbert, the one that I just gave Kev that Kev did this morning, he was complaining about the price of Lyft because he can't afford it. This guy, he can't afford he rides Lyft to work, but he don't take it to home because to go home is more than twice as what he pays to get to work because Lyft will be surging like crazy and shit. It don't pay the driver shit, but it makes the rider pay a whole lot. So the guy was saying he takes the bus home. Kev, I think he got what time he gets off? Like 5, 530. Kev, I think that's what time he, he gets off. The dude said he don't make it home to almost nine o'clock every night. So he goes at work. I picked him up. It was like 445 in the morning. I picked him up at 445 in the morning. Got all of his information, got everything, dropped him off at work, shot Kev all of his information to pick him up later. And once Kev picked him up later, because usually the guy would get off work, go to the bus, and he would get on the bus at 5 35, 45 p.m. And he wouldn't make it home till nine o'clock. He says, Man, my kids be sleeping when I get home every night. So you leave in the morning when your kids are asleep, and you get home at night when your kids are asleep. You never see your kids. And this is what we do with the 300. We could take care of that problem, man. Here's a card. You ain't got to get on them. You ain't got to pay these high ass lift rates for these surges and all this crazy shit. You pay a fair price. We'll do a fair job for you. This is we the 300, man. Here's my car. So I took him to work. Kev took him home. And if and they already know if you need something else, you shoot me a text. You shoot Kev a text. You shoot somebody a text. We're going to take care of you. We're a network of drivers out here. Like I said, and, and I only hope other regions see this out there. Other regions see this and go. We need to find a way to get off these apps. And when, I, like I said, when I speak about things, whether it be about hum or anything else, drivers need to stick together. These apps are going to win if we don't stick together. We've got to realize there's enough money out there. At 530, I told me Mrs. A Buster wants to get home earlier. Give me a call. Yeah, there you go. Good shit. Good shit. And that's the thing. If we don't stick together, these apps are going to win. And we're going to end up being a whole bunch of broke ass drivers. That's what we're going to end up being. And just like I said with Lisa, hopefully... We you turn that catering business into an actual business because they're paying pretty well now. But I'm thinking you can migrate that slowly migrate it to something else to where you say, OK, you work with a, a actual like, let's say you're working with a bakery or working with a restaurant and you're their main person. They're contracting with you to do all the catering orders they do so they don't got to go through Uber or Lyft. They say, well, we just call Lisa. We don't call Uber and Lyft no more. We call Lisa. We pay Lisa this much. She takes it to this company. She sets up there and she does it every week this day. You could do a direct relationship like that and you could just completely cut the apps out. I mean, I would be trying that shit, especially if you knew, if you knew a company was always catering to somebody, but they always went through Uber and Lyft. They got to pay a huge percentage to Uber and Lyft. Then they got to pay a percentage to all the workers that are doing it. They can cut out the middleman, cut it out. Be like, listen, Lisa, you're doing this every day. You always show up. You're always here for Uber. You're always here for DoorDash doing these catering orders. How about we just do this? Since we know you're reliable, we know you're safe. We get great reviews every time for how you're setting shit up. We just do a direct relationship thing. You come pick this up. You take it there. We cut you a check. Cool. That'll work. That'll work. I mean, the potential is there. The potential for delivery to be more than just delivery. It's there. But people have to like that guy. Tony delivers up in Seattle. He cut the app out. He started to do shit for five dollars to delivery, which is a step. It's a step in the right direction. But you've got to say, hey, how much more lucrative is this industry really going to be? I think Lisa, she's out in uh, New York, I think. She might be in New York or New Jersey. She's out there. I'm in Indianapolis. Listen, keep it ground. Oh, cool, brother. Cool. Thank you. Under the influence. I appreciate that, brother. Man. And OK, New York. Yeah, my new shoes out there in New York. Under the influence. This is what we do, man. We, we try to help each other out because this world it was created on on dissension, on people just fighting each other, always trying to be one up, one up, trying to conquer something, get over on something. Imagine the collective. We call it a conscious collective. If everybody's thinking of the same direction, even though we may use different measures to get there, different ways to get there. We have this conscious collective to say this is where we need to be. We need to all be better off than what we are right now. We need to be more stable and more secure in what we do every day. Uber and Lyft, they just like, I got a video. Somebody wanted to talk on a live stream, so I'm going to have them on a live stream when I do a stream yard next. Uh, I'm probably later today, I'm going to get on stream yard. I'm on YouTube right now. But he said, and he had to go to court. This guy had to go to court against Uber. So he went to court against, the judge forced Uber to tell it to that Uber representative to say the truth about drivers can be deactivated at any time for no reason at all. 
They have, we signed a contract. Not only that, but they can also take away our insurance at any time without even knowledge. I read that on one of my videos. They can take away our insurance right now on the spot without us even having knowledge of it. And we agree to that. We drive out of here with no insurance, pick somebody up. We have no idea. We, we don't have them on our, they're not on our insurance because they don't, they don't have to notify you. They could just take it away. And this lady went in court. Like I said, I'm going to bring this other guy on. He went to court and Uber admitted that they can deactivate you for no reason at all. I don't have to do anything to be deactivated. They can just do it because they feel like it. That is not a very stable way to live life. That's not stable. And we're trying to build a sense of stability to the game. Bring a sense of stability where somebody says, even if Lyft and Uber deactivates me, I have a private client base and doing what I do. Oh, I already opted out already. And I even put the opt out uh, email address on there for everybody on that video I did. I opted out already. So be careful out there because I carry here in AZ and they're holding y'all hostage in New York. Yeah, yeah. And it's like when you sit up there and you have the, the right to get rid of somebody. And I mean, it's like they don't even have to tell you why they're deactivating you, why they just close your account. They could just not like you today. So, you know what? I don't like the fact that this dude is like getting rid of all of these, you know, nature hikes. Deactivate his account, man, because I'm tired of him just declining all those type of rides. They could do that. They could do it. And this guy, he has a court case that shows that he was actually in court and the, the Uber had to admit, had to admit that they can deactivate people for no reason at all. Imagine you going out, buying a house, taking a vacation, buying a new car, doing all this, and you're on pins and needles every day. Pins and needles. Because an app might get rid of you today. They might leave town tomorrow. They might leave town next month. You're on pins and needles all the time. You've got to start setting up your private client base because people still going to need to get around. They just don't need to do it on the app. If the app is a plantation, you got to free yourself from it somehow. You got to free yourself. You can't just sit there thinking the apps are going to be here forever. At the rate that they're going now, at the rate that they're not paying drivers, they won't even pay some drivers $15 an hour in Minnesota and they're mad about it. I don't care about the minimum of $15 an hour because you know we're going to exceed that all the time. But just a simple fact that they would tell people, we're not paying you a minimum of $15 an hour. We're going to leave town. You're leaving town just for that? You going? It's not like these people are asking for $50, $60, $70 an hour. They just ask for $15. you are going to leave town for that? That means they'll leave town for anything. And you don't want to have yourself caught up, have your, your clients who got jobs. Because there's people who I'll be, man, early in the morning, people keep like declining my rides. I'll be at work late. I'm going to get fired, man, if I don't find a better ride. And a lot of people, they just, they get a ride to work, but they'll take the bus home. They only get a ride to work. They can't even afford it. But they do it because they can't be late. They're going to get fired. So on the way home, they don't have that time constraint. So they just take the bus and just ride home easy. You know, three, four hours riding the bus and shit. But it's like, man. Say so what up? Shout out to Jesse because I lived up there like 30 years ago. There you go. The level also covers more than just your car. Yeah. And then no love for drivers on these apps. No, nah, man. And that's the thing. When you're sitting up there, seeing how they're they're willing to just walk away from a city, just walk away from a whole city. This is people with jobs who rely. They live, you know, 13, 14 miles away from their job. They use ride share to get to work because they know it's a three hour drive if they did it on a bus. Two, three hours of all these stops and all these pickups. So they use ride share. Roger is like, we don't care about them people. They really don't because what they care about is those medical contracts. They care about tax dollars going into their bank. That's what they care about. They don't care about the people. They're looking at the dollars these people generate from being on their app and using their service, all their partners. So what we have to do as drivers who love our community and take care of our community say, we need to be proactive, not reactive. Minnesota is reactive. They're reacting to some shit. I told those motherfuckers in my videos, leave. If you don't like, if you don't want to be in uh in Minnesota, Uber and Lyft could just leave. Leave. Let the drivers figure it out. Let them get all the riders around. Let them get true cash in their hand. Be true independent contractors. Really make money. Because that will weed out the pigeons. True independent contracting will weed out all the pigeons. Because, like Kev, the other day, and, and I was saying this earlier, Kev, this is, you're gonna love this shit. Kev walked up and, and me and Kev was talking at the meetup and everything. So he walked up. He was like, he said, we can really see we got some pigeons now. We got some pigeons coming around here now because there was this one guy and you could tell he was completely out of it. Com he he takes every ride on Uber and Lyft. He's trying to do hum now. He's saying how he doesn't get any hum rides, but he's taking every ride on Uber and Lyft. That right there was was a dead 
giveaway that this guy was a pigeon. The cat was like, yeah, we got some pigeons around here, man. <laughs> I was like, all them rides you're taking on Uber and Lyft, those are actually hum clients. You're, you're giving Lyft and Uber way too much control. You're giving them too much control over your life to say, you know what? Everybody who comes through Uber is an Uber passenger. Everybody who comes through Lyft is a Lyft passenger. No, these are citizens of the United States of America. These are citizens who deserve a chance to know that these apps are lying, overcharging them, underpaying drivers. These citizens deserve the truth to know that there's another way you can get around and not be ripped off. These are not customers. These are not passengers. These are citizens. Look at them as people who have families at home who don't need to be gouged for $80. They probably don't got $80 to pay. They have no other way out. These are citizens. You need to talk to these people. So when this guy told me, yeah, man, I take every ride. I take every, I don't turn down a single ride, you know, and nothing comes through Hummer Lip. I was like, bro, I make more money on Hum than I make on Uber now. But I get more pings on Uber than I get on Hum. How is that possible? Like I said, we're at the hour mark. So I already know that Uber and Lyft ain't watching now. I can say what the fuck I want to say now. After I pass the first 20, 30 minutes of a video, oh, shit, I can say what the fuck I want to say. People usually drop off. So if you got a lot of Uber hits and you don't like none of those fares, those should be your hum rides right there. If I see a ride that's a half mile away, 32 miles, and they're trying to give me $23 for it, that's a $45, $50 ride for me. But it's a hum ride. So I got to drive a half mile to get in the car. Hey, you know what? I don't know how much you guys are paying, but they're only offering me like $20 for this fucking ride or whatever this and that. And I'm, I'm, I usually do this ride for 45, 50 bucks. I normally do it for, oh, well shit. They're charging us $64 for this ride. 64, 89. Oh man. I only do it for like 45, 50 bucks. I could do it on hum. We got a whole nother ride share app. I could do it on hum. Before I did it on hum, I would just say, Hey, I could just do it. If you cash out Venmo me, I could do it a lot cheaper. You know, this and that. And we, I can just cancel the ride. So you don't got to pay for it. I'll cancel it. And the app will try to send you another ride. When I cancel, either Uber or Lyft will try to send that rider. It says pairing you with another driver. Cancel that pair. If you cancel that pair, you don't get charged for it. But if you allow it to be paired, then you might have to pay for it. But hurry up. When I cancel it, you don't. I take the hit for the cancel because I don't give a shit about the cancellation rate. I could care less about it. So I cancel and I'm like, it'll try to pair you with somebody. Cancel the pair. Don't let it pair. OK, just say you don't need the ride because you don't need it. You got a ride. I'm your ride. You got another option now. You don't always have to take it out. Like I said, if you go to the post office and they tell you, hey, this box is forty five dollars to ship. And you say, well, shit, FedEx was charging me 20. You're going to pick up your box and you're going to walk to FedEx. You can make that decision at any point in the transaction that you don't want to do the decision. They could be ringing this motherfucker up at the post office with your box on the scale and you can have your phone going, hey, can I do? Can you do me a favor? Since I didn't pay for this already, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this transaction because at FedEx, they're doing this same package for $20. I'm just going to go across the street. Okay, I can just hit, you know, cancel sale. And that's what we're doing. When we hit cancel, we're hitting cancel this sale, cancel this transaction. That's what cancel means. You're canceling this transaction and you're giving them a better option now. And that's how I look at it. So Uber and Lyft could be pissed off at me. I'm like, but you got an independent contractor in the car. I'm not a Lyft employee. I'm not an Uber employee. You can't tell me shit. You can't tell me that I cannot inform these people of a better deal out there, a better option. When I'm driving and I don't want to use your map, if I can say, hey, there's a better way to get there. I don't want to use the Uber map. I'm going to turn here. That's me giving them a better option. Instead of going left and being caught up here, we're going to go right and go, okay, that's fine. You're the driver. They don't care. I don't have to use that, that map if I don't feel like it. I could drive the way I want to drive. So I say, okay, this is what we do. I don't like this transaction, the way it's set up. I don't like the fact that you paid $68. I'm getting 23 and it's for 32 miles. I don't like this transaction. So let's do it for $40, 50 bucks. Okay, cool. Just cash at me, Venmo. He's hanging on my backseat. Here's my car. You can't. As soon as you cash out Venmo, me, bam, I'm out. Yeah, you know, hum. People flat out tell you this app is not Uber or Lyft. This app is for you to build your business. Uber and Lyft are now just a referral list app. Yep, exactly, Kev. Exactly. And this is why I tell and Kev, what you don't realize also earlier today, Prestige told me down in Tucson, in Tucson, uh, hum is like waving. Their, their monthly subscription fee, which I think is amazing. But that tells you right there that this company is full of people, humans that understand other people. They understand Tucson is not a bit big market like us. So they're giving them a waiver to allow them to build their business for free right now. That shit means a lot to me. It means a lot to me that they would do that for them people in Tucson. 
And here they're telling us at every meetup, listen, this app is for you to build your business, man. Go out there and get the ride set up. We're, we're paying for insurance. They got a lot of back end, back end administration shit they're paying for that we don't even cover. But we're building this all. We're all building it. They got investor money. They got, you know, that, that crowdfunding shit they're doing on their website and everything. So they're being able to build this big so we can do stuff in where Robin is in Western Arizona. We can do stuff in Tucson. We can move it down to Yuma. We can do all of that. And this app is, man, man. Oh, yeah, Chris, I noticed that, man. The map has been taking the extra long way. Dude, and they'll they'll give you a gray one, and then they'll give you the, the faster one, but it's a longer one. It's way more miles. I mean, I'll be cutting off like two, three miles off of a trip. How in the hell am I cutting off two, three miles off of these trips? Because they'll have me going down the street this way, this way, cutting up this road, going. I'm like, I'm going to cut through this neighborhood. Yesterday, they had me going all the way north, going all the way uh, like west, then dropping all the way back south. I went straight through the fucking neighborhood. Dude, it knocked off like about a mile. I just went straight through the neighborhood. I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> it's like, man. So I found something to get out of gig work. We'll stay fighting for drivers. I still plan on doing it part time. There you go, Drew. There you go, brother. Get it. Get it. Oh, yeah, man. Hum's got to get to Denver. And like I said, we're slowly building it. We're slowly building it. And like Kev said, when you got the executives, you got the founders meeting the drivers in person. They don't just talk to us on a telephone. They don't just see us at an, at an event. No, they come to where we are. Hey, where are you guys at? We're going to hang out. We're going to this and that. And we chop it up. We share energy. We share ideas and shit. We got a Zoom call. I should share that Zoom call link so other people from other states can get in on a Zoom call just to hear what we talk about on these Zoom calls. Because it'd be like 20, 30 of us on the Zoom calls. And there's a lot of good information coming here. Chris, his dad, you know, Anna, everybody's on there to answer questions all the time. I might do that. Just, just share that Zoom call link just to get a lot of people on that call so other people can hear what's going on behind the scenes because we do it, I think, once or twice a week they do the Zoom call. But it really helps us stay focused on, on realizing what this app really is. Like Kev said, it's for building your business. It's for you being a better driver. It's for you to get paid. These apps, they got a rate. The rate card is for riders. For riders that want to book an app, book a ride through the app, the rider goes to and they'll book a ride from their house to work and say, oh, $17 is all it's going to cost me. 17 is cool. They can hit find rider. I mean, find driver. When they find the driver, that driver's getting that $17 they just saw on this app. So the drivers get the whole 17. Now, if it's a Lyft driver, a Lyft rider, they go on Lyft because they don't have hum yet. Yet is key word. <laughs> so it's like, what up, Rip Bone, my man? So they go on Lyft and they go, I need to ride from home to work. Instead of $17 like they would have paid on uh, hum, it comes up $29. Okay, so it's $30 to get to work. Driver's going to get $13 out of that $30. Driver might get $13 out of that $30. Cool. So they book it through Lyft. I show up. I say, okay, I see how far we're going and everything like this. And that. Listen, I'm going to save you some money. I'm going to do this ride for about 20 bucks. This is what I tell them. I don't look at the rates. I tell them what I think is worth to me. I know I said earlier it was 17, but remember, I'm not going through the app. They only get that price if they go through the app. I'll do this for 20 bucks. Okay, because I'm paying 29 right now through Lyft. Cancel Lyft. Do cancel. Hey, make sure you look at your phone when I cancel this, because when I cancel, they're going to try to pair you with another driver. Make sure you cancel that pair or they will charge you if you don't cancel that pair. Okay, I cancel. They cancel. We're good to go. Go. Uh, you can pay me cash, cash app. They pay me. What's your phone number? Type the phone number in. All right, here's a car. You can download this app when you get to work or whatever. Download this app in your spare time. Make sure you download that app. Start driving. They get out and ride. Done deal. I made $20, not $13. They paid $20, not $29. Now, the next time they get on, they may only pay $17 because now they got the app on their phone now. So they say, oh, shit. Last time dude paid me, you know, he charged me $20. It's only $17. So I guess I'll leave a $3 tip. So he's going to keep paying $20, not the $29. So his next driver is going to get $20 too, because he's going to pay the $17 plus a $3 tip, because you can tip through the HUM app. And that's how I do it. That's how I build the business. I'm building this not just for me, but I give the card, not just my own personal card. I give the business card because there's going to be HUM drivers out here that's going to want the business. So I give them the HUM card and say, download that app, open it up, see what drivers are in the area. Because I'm looking out for my people too, not just me. I'm building my business, but I'm building a business at the same time. Now, it might be somebody going, oh, man, you know, hey, thank you, Rip Bone. I appreciate that, brother. Say, 
watching hit the like please yeah so now i tell people say what well, i'm planning on retiring the elantra soon i'll be pulling up on something nice all oh, jesse keep that elantra man that's gonna be your spare car always keep a spare car i got my 05 escalade that old ass truck sitting outside you need a spare man you need always need a spare keep you can retire it but just you know get something clean man like i said get you the new elantras are really nice the new camry's new elantras are real nice but when i'm building a business I'm not just building my business, but I'm building the business in general, even for other drivers in the area, more sustainable than just having Uber and Lyft who are threatening to leave town at any minute, threatening to deactivate a driver at any minute. So I don't mind giving somebody a car. If it's a recurring issue, then yeah, I'll say, give me your phone number and here's my business card. Text me and I'm going to see if I can work out a way how to get you to and from work. If I can't do it, I got four or five drivers that can. Trust me, we'll figure it out. And they love that shit because they see me take being proactive. I'm proactive. And I'll text Gilbert as well and say, hey, you know what? I got my man Kev. Kev said he's agreed to it. Here it is. I sent Kev uh, Gilbert's information. I told him Kev was going to be hitting him up. Kev hit him up. That's Kev's client now. I made a promise and I got through. So now that the Gilbert guy, he knows that I'm not full of shit because I told him I will set you up with somebody and you will get to him from work. We got you covered. And that's what being business is about. We're, we're very proactive. And it, like I said, I'm not going to be able to do all these rides by myself. This is a billion dollar industry. My bank account will never hit a billion because I'm not doing all rides, which means the plate is real big. There's no need for people to be greedy. No need for people to be competing with each other. The plate is real big. We just got to get these motherfuckers off Lyft's plate, off Uber's plate, put them on our plate. That's what we do here. This is Mike and other ideas for your local dealer auction. Yeah, for your fellow deaf drivers. I'm keeping my verse when I get my Infinity QX60. Oh, yeah, keep it. I'm telling you, man, never get rid of a spare car because you don't want to have to deal with somebody saying, oh, yeah, man, uh, we we offer a rental car while your car is being worked on. You go to get your you go to get a rental car and they be like, yeah, well, all the loaner cars are gone. So and now you stuck sitting there having to use Uber Lyft or some shit because they lied to you and told you all the loaner cars. <laughs> always keep a spare car. Always, always. Do something dip. Yeah. I mean, this is cool. Like I said, a lot of people may not like the videos and that's OK. And I tell people you can dislike it, like it, whatever you want. I can care less. The truth is this information is critical to the survival of, of humans over corporate America. We becoming a technocracy and you got a lot of people who don't like the way I speak. And I'm telling you right now, a lot of people who probably watch my videos are at people. They're corporate people. There are people who work for the apps there because, like I said, Uber and Lyft. They're just like FBI and everything. They got people scouring social media, looking at channels like mine. They got people scouring social media, looking to see what drivers are doing out there. Why is our revenue down in that region? Oh, shit, there's a driver talking about this and driver time. So they're, they're taking all these videos and all this information right back to their headquarters. And they're having boardroom meetings and staff meetings. Hey, man, there's this mic drop podcast shit. Hey, you know, they got this new app in Arizona right now. That's why, you know, people are converting. And that's why our cancel rates are going through the roof right now. We know it. I know they're watching our shit, but it's like they should watch us. These motherfuckers see us coming. You should be watching us. You've done us dirty when you had a chance to do us right. Had you been doing us right, we'd be promoting Uber more. We were promoting Lyft more. But yet you want to sit there and promote, you know, ripping off drivers, promote stealing tips. Talking about, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. No, no. We're going to promote another app then. We're going to do that. What up, Alicia? What's good? What's good? Look at her. She down. Well, she's down in Douglas. I've been knowing Alicia for a long time. Alicia, when did when did we meet? I met you back like in what 2003? <laughs> she's not a driver. Alicia's not a driver. She this is like a friend of mine. So apparently you're and I saw thank you so much for joining the membership group. I saw that the other day. I was gonna text you and say thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. Great idea with Hummer Private Rise. Will break slavery. Real shit, Jamil, man. My man Jim, 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 Jamil. 2006. Okay, that was a while. 2006. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's, I've been watching your lives two, three months without a channel. I just got my channel on 4124. And that's what you got to do. Do something different. You got to start it someday. And I tell everybody, start your channel someday. Because if you don't, it'll never take. There's guys out there who, you know, they've got, like my man Bighorn Kev. He's got like 50 subscribers. So he's going to start doing live streams on his channel. And hopefully it starts growing. Because this information can't just come from one source. If we're going to go against these giants, if the 300 going to go against giants and we're grabbing apps like Hum, we're teaching people how to do private rides. We're talking about livery insurance. We're talking about, you know, catering for yourself and linking up with restaurants to cater for yourself. If we're going to attack giants, we're going to need more channels. 
because one channel ain't gonna make it. It's like trying to race a Corvette with a four cylinder car. You're not, you need more cylinders, you need more horsepower. The more channels we get, the more horsepower we got, and we can take down these giants. We ain't gonna completely eradicate them, but they can completely eradicate drivers with their technology. They can deactivate you, they can have driverless systems, they can, you know, politics, they can say, Hey, you know what? You can't be on ride share unless you got a car with this type of insurance and this type of you know year make model. They can get rid of drivers any minute, any minute. So we need to start being proactive. Like I said, don't be reactive like Minneapolis. Do not be reactive. Be proactive. Already know what's coming down the pipe. Be ahead of the curve. And a lot of, like even to this day, I'm looking at a lot of channels out there because I watch channels when I'm like cooking breakfast and all that shit. And these motherfuckers are still promoting Uber and Lyft as if there's like, we know that we can make money on it. I mean, all you got to do is cat. We, we've done this a lot. Thank you, Big Horn Kid. The 300 Phoenix example can be nationwide. Say we take someone to the airport, they're going to LA, Chicago, New York, Atlanta. We can recommend the drivers in those cities. Real shit, real shit. That's what we do, brother. Say, oh, I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Alicia. Appreciate that. Jeff, you're giving raw info that's needed, not that soft shit like some others. Yeah, man. Because, like I said, we know we can make money with Uber and Lyft because we talk about Paw Patrol. We talk about trap and surge. We talk about only doing short rides. We talk about not doing nature hikes. We can't keep talking about that shit every single day. We've got to go on tangents to say, okay, if we're now that we know what weapons we got, how can we start using the money and the profits we got to build something outside of that plantation? That's the next level now. Level one was how do we drive better? That was level one. We got a lot of people that are not pigeons now. A lot of people knowing that they can decline and not be deactivated. A lot of people knowing you can cancel and not have to worry about canceling. People even months ago. Because we've been doing this shit for a couple of years. Even months ago, people were still on my channel. Oh, you can't just keep declining rides. You're going to get deactivated. You can't just keep declining. You're telling people bad information. If their AR gets too low, they're going to be deactivated. Months ago, not even months ago, people were still saying this shit on channels. And I'm like, what, what the fuck? Are you? you can decline whatever you want to decline. You have that option. I had to do a whole fucking video of it. I had to do a video of myself talking with customer support saying, and they saying, hey, Jeff, we give you the opportunity to decline whatever you don't want. You are not in risk of being deactivated. I even went to Uber Legal and put a video of Uber Legal on there because these people are so trapped into that indoctrinated plantation mentality that they've got to build the, the Uber app. They've got to build the Lyft app. They got to do whatever they're told to do. That's plantation right there. And once I started creating the, the more mindset and more drivers started coming over here and they started saying, man, I this is my AR fucking 3%. Oh, my AR is 11%. Once everybody started seeing it, it just wasn't me with a low AR, but it was all of us with low ARs, but all of us were still making profits. We were still turning profits. And what were we doing with those profits? We were expanding our private client base. So we've been using smart driving, smart tactics and all that shit to generate profits, to get off the plantation, not to get deeper into that motherfucker. And a lot of these people, that's what they do. These channels out there, oh, well, Lyft is doing something amazing for drivers now. Lyft is going to give you a 10% turbo. And I don't even talk about that shit. I'm like 10% on $1 is 10 cents. It's a dime. So you're telling me you're going to give me an extra dime, extra 20 cent, 30 cent, and I'm sitting in a $40,000 car? You're giving me 30 cents? And I'm supposed to make a whole video about this shit, acting like I'm happy about 30 cent, and you're stealing my tip? You got a $20 tip? Now, like just like Jesse said, they're charging service fees on tips now. So you get a $20 tip, $10 tip, you're going to get 15 bucks, 16 bucks. So all this turbo shit you're doing, you're taking it when people are tipping us. You, so I'm going to give you guys 20% turbo, 30% turbo, but then somebody tips me $5 and I get a $3 tip. You just took it all back. That's why I don't talk about shit with these apps. They're janky ass apps. They're jank. And that's all. If we got a way to get off this plantation, I'm going to speak on it. I'm not trying to push nobody deeper in. And we still got channels out there who claim they're rideshare channels when we know that they're not. They're channels that are they're selling for views and shit. They want to talk about a topic. Talk about a topic. What up, Brian? My man, Brian. Bro, I got to talk to you about something too, bro. I met a lady that knows you, man. She knows you. The lady from the library that does the, um, she does the campaign. She gets the signatures all the time. She lives over in Tempe, right down Spencer Avenue. She says she knows you because I picked her up from the library the other day on Mill and Southern. And she was like, well, usually Brian picks me up. Brian's a nice guy. I like Brian. 
I was like, she had a little table and all her stuff and everything. She came walking to the car. I put it all in the car. She was like, usually Brian comes and gets me. You know, Brian. I was like, I know Brian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Terry, that's her name. Terry, yep. She lives in the house with the red door. She says, well, that's my house with the red door. I was like, oh, what's, what's up? And that's the thing. A lot of hum people, because it's such a small economy right now for hum, they know that we drivers all know each other because we go to the meetups. And we come to the Zoom calls and stuff like that. So it, it feels good to them that we all know somebody that's familiar to each other. And we're chatting and talking back and forth. And that's why it's good for drivers to get to know each other. Because people are going to ask you about another driver. No drivers, no people. Talk to people. Because once you do that, they feel safer. Uber drivers don't know Uber drivers. He said, like, hey, this lady Shelly picked me up. Lady, we got like 10,000 Uber drivers in this town. I don't know who Shelly is. But in a region, in a certain region... If everybody got to know everybody in that region, it might make people feel safer. Hey, you know Billy Proctor? Yeah, I know Billy Proctor. He's got the white Escalade. Yeah, yeah. Now they feel safer now. You know Brian? Yeah, I know Brian. Well, Brian usually picks me up or Marcel picks me up all the time. Marcel always. Now I know Marcel too. And it's like, it's it becomes a tight knit community and people feel a lot safer like that. And that's like I said, it doesn't have to be just with Hum. It could be with anything. Drivers in other cities got to start forming coalitions because if we don't do that, the apps are going to take us down. And we can't have that, man. We can't have that. No, -uh. so I can't donate a lot. I'm not even working currently. I'll do something different. You good, brother. You good. Like I said, people always help me with this channel, man. And and I'm gonna keep it like this. I'm gonna always be a driver's channel. And I'm not. I don't only speak on things because it's local. I speak on things because it's, it's only right to do so. And if there's an option out there, an opportunity out there, I'm gonna speak on it. No matter what city it's in, I'm gonna speak on it. I've spoke about a lot of things on this channel. Because if drivers don't realize that that you can, you know, come to a, a channel and the synergy of all these drivers you see over there, all these drivers, they're going to help somebody out. Whether the information they give, the motivation, they might tell, like, is it, we learned from Jamil. We learned about, you know, how to get a four-hour permit in Arizona. We learned that from Jamil. And drivers are willing to give information if you're just willing to listen. A motherfucker driver militia. Hell, that's what we are. That's exactly what we are. Driver militia. We out here getting this shit. We the 300. But it's like we sit there and what Mike said, damn, I took a nap. I was at the gym earlier. Got some ride share fluff going on my chin, dude. <laughs> Mike is <laughs> the ride share fluff. Yeah. But and this is the thing, though. When we sit up there and we we help each other out, we build each other. We don't have to be like some of these channels who, who want to, you know, get on other people's live streams talking about fucking, you know, minimums and shit. No, no, we don't do that. Like to talk shit about certain regions. We don't do that. We build people up. We don't destroy. We build over here. What was that 55% cancellation rate? Damn. I converted rise to cash, especially on weekends. Hey, I'm at 38% now. I think I'm at 35 to 38. I was at 38, but then I took a couple of rides and it got back down to 35. I'm up there, man. Well, I'm 55 and I'll listen to anybody, bro. Hey, that's that's me. I tell, and just like my mom said when I was little, she, I mean, because we didn't have a car when I was little, so she used to walk with me all the time. And she'd be like, Jeff, if the enemy ever invites you into their camp, look at their blueprint. And she used to tell me shit like that all the time. Like, this lady was so sharp. She was like, she would drop like nuggets like that, like motherfucking, you know, Aesop's fables or something. I don't know. She's like, hey, if the enemy ever allows you into their camp, look at their blueprints, study their plans. That way you know how to react to what they're doing because you've already seen what they're doing. I watch a lot of channels because I know a lot of people don't like me and I'm okay with that because that's just the nature of how shit is. People don't like me. I'm cool with that. I'm a very hard person to deal with because I'm not a pushover. I'm not a sellout. I don't fuck with people like that. I'm hard to control. And most people who want to control you, especially like let's say a man wants to control his woman. He doesn't like a woman that he can't control. He wants a woman that he can't control. If a woman wants to control a man, the woman won't like men that are hard to control. She wants a man she can control. Some people are just like that in their head. They think I want to be able to control this person because I want to be in control of the situation. I tell people I ain't in control of shit. Everybody's going to do what they want to do. I just put information on the table. Adults are going to make adult decisions. Everybody's going to do what they want to do. I don't control what people say. I don't control what they do. I just say I'm all about energy. That's the energy we own over here. If you don't like something, you have the ability to get up and leave, go somewhere else. You don't have to stay here. I don't control. Hey, you got to stay on my channel. You got to sub my channel. No, you don't. You can just do what you want to do. You can go to where your energy is more in line with the shit you own. You have that freedom to do that. And I'm old enough to realize if I went through life thinking that I had to control everything around me, control all the people around me, I wouldn't be able to function because I'd be, I'd be like, you know, trying to herd cats all the time, trying to control everything. If you look at the, I'm, I'm not very, very super, super religious. 
But if you look at the serenity prayer, that serenity prayer was written a long time ago. That serenity prayer is the most logical, common sense shit you'll ever read in your life. It's just a serenity prayer. It's all it is. And you don't have to be religious to even appreciate what it's telling you. It's telling you an energy. It's telling you how to have peace with everything around you. It's telling you that you don't have to fight and force and hurt, catch your whole life. It's a prayer about serenity. It's a serenity prayer. I'm like, dude, this is common sense shit. I like that. I like that. I mean, I don't wear shirts with it and walk around and rock those because a lot of people aren't religious. But my energy is that. That's my energy. So you may look into the Bible. Like I said, I'm my brother's keeper. That's in the Bible. I'm my brother's keeper. I may not be a religious person and always talk about religion all the time, but there's a lot of stuff in that Bible that ironically I rock with. I'm just like that. So you ain't got to pray to God. You ain't got to believe in God. You ain't got to just be you. And if you feel that you're in line with how the Bible is going, that's just coincidence. You might be a godly person without even trying to be one. You might be, you know, a, a person walking a path that naturally you walk because there's evil out there that walks an evil path. There's haters out there that walk a hater path. There's shit that don't walk the path of righteousness. And I'm not saying it's a religious sense. Trust me, I'm not a very religious person, but there's a path of righteousness that you can walk. And you don't even have to say, I believe in God to walk that. It's just who you are. You probably are somebody designed to be a certain way by something greater than you that you don't even believe in. And that's cool because my another thing my mom told me, she said, Jeff, it's cool if you don't believe in God, but God believes in you. Your brain is too small to create God or destroy God, Jeff. Your brain is too small. So even if you don't believe in God, it's cool because he believes in you. He gives you enough to say, I don't believe in him. And he'll still give you goodness because he knows you're a good person. You walk a certain way, Jeff. You don't believe nothing about, but you walk a certain way. You're more God-like than what you think because he made you like that. You don't have to believe it. Your brain is too small. You can't create him nor destroy him. He exists because he does. You exist because he believes in you. You don't have to believe in him. You're not killing his existence. My mom used to tell me shit like this all the time. And I would sit up and just listen. Whether or not I believed or whether it was very profound for a kid to live a life like that and to just walk and just go through life being the best person I could be. Knowing I didn't have to hate on nobody to get ahead. I didn't have to destroy nothing to get ahead. I could just build, just build, just go through life building. And you're going to be taken care of. Whether or not you believe in God, yeah, your existence unconsciously knows God without us saying stuff with our mouths. Like I said, you don't exist because, I mean, like I said, she like that God don't exist because you believe in Him. You exist because He believed in you enough to bring you here, and He gave you the mind to say, "You don't even have to believe in me if you don't want to." It's cool. Your mind is too small. You ain't got to believe in me. It's all right. It's cool. It's cool. So you can walk around all day. I don't believe in God. It's cool. He still believes in you. Knock yourself out. Don't say that because it offends me to say God believes in me because I don't believe in him. It's cool. It's cool. Some people like that just got to walk past. Let them keep walking the path they walk and This is their existence. Let them live it. Because they only exist because God believed in them enough to make them exist. God don't exist because you believe in him or not. It's just, it is what it is. Chalk it up what it is. You could be mad and walk around and stump all day. I don't believe. I don't believe. Knock yourself out with that shit, man. Cool. I'm going to go have me some ice cream while you walk around saying you don't believe. That's cool. It's cool. Because my mom already warned me a long time ago, you got paths of evil and you got paths of righteousness. Read the Bible. Just read it. You don't got to believe none of that shit. I read the news and I don't believe none of that shit. I read everything about COVID. I didn't believe none of that shit, but I was reading it all because my mom said, when the enemy invites you into your camp, read their blueprint. My mom told, so of course I read everything it was from Dr. Fauci and COVID. I read all of that shit because I got invited into the camp. The enemy invited me into the camp, so I read it. If you think religion is, is against you or religion is the enemy, walk into the camp. Read the Bible. It's there. Read it. You'd be surprised to find out how much you probably think and live and believe and your logic is lined up with a lot of shit that was written centuries and centuries ago. Whether or not the Bible was copied from Egyptian religion, whether or not Egyptian religion was copied from another religion, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is the energy you rock with every day. If you rock with hating energy, destructive energy, that's just how you are. You probably need Jesus, motherfucker. I don't know. But if you rock every day with righteous energy and you just want to look out for your brothers and stuff like that, man, you'll go a whole lot further in life. You're going to go a whole lot further in life. And I've known, you know, 
I see a bunch of lone wolves out there. They always trying to scheme and scam people. They bounce from group to group to group. They always trying to scheme and scam people. They never have a true home. And that's why I tell people, especially on this channel, you know, it, it feels like home here. It feels like home here. And a lot of people, they don't feel like home over here. And I tell those people, you can unsub my channel. You don't have to ever watch me again. You can block me, ban me. I don't give a fuck. If this, if this place don't feel like home to you, you're not welcome to the barbecue. You can just go wherever you want to go. I'm not trying to get everybody on YouTube to be on my channel. I'm really not trying that because there's a lot of energy out there I don't like. It's evil people. It's funky haters and shit. I don't like everybody. So I've never tried to make this channel for everybody. This channel is for a select few people. And I'm glad that people come on here and they tell their truths, their stories, their ARs, their CRs, how they get rides. How There's no secrets in ride share like that. And I've said that shit many in my videos. There ain't no real secret in ride share. It ain't no real secret in ride share. The only secret is how can you get around a, a certain group of people, stay safe, stay profitable, and not let evil sneak into your group? That's the true secret. Yeah, I like it's how people listen to AM talk radio to see what programming is being given, even if they don't agree with it. Yeah, exactly, Zick. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. And I know every once in a while you'll try to get somebody that'll try to infiltrate your group. So you got to know, you know what? We we got a hater in the group that's trying, because even on my channel, on my videos, like I told people, it used I used to get like five, six, seven dislikes on my group, on my videos every time I put one out. But it would be like 200 likes, five dislikes. It was like that every time. Then the the whoever was disliking it because I wouldn't change my content just because of the dislikes. I wouldn't change my content. I don't give a fuck about the dislikes. I would keep talking how I talk, being how I be, and they would keep clicking dislike as if I'm gonna change who I am. That didn't it didn't phase them. So now they started getting upset to the point where they started actually making comments in my shit. The dislikes wasn't throwing me off, so they started making comments, and I started seeing who the fucking haters was. Now it's at a point where I only get one or two dislikes. I went from five, six, seven per video down to two per video. So whoever I've been blocking and banning were the original dislikers, those motherfuckers, because they started talking. Like I say, when you cut the fucking grass, snakes will show. And I'll be making my videos exactly how I make them. I never fucking, you know, change my mode, never change my tempo. I'll be going, go dislike, 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 dislike. And I never change. They get so mad. They go, you know what? I'm going to say something since my dislikes aren't making a difference. You know what? You should stop this and you should stop and you should. That's the motherfucker clicking dislikes. I go to their channel real quick. I hit uh, hide user from content or whatever the fuck I got to hit. I go to their comment and I fucking remove it. And that would take away some dislikes because I'm not here to fuck with nobody. I'm not here to piss people off. If my channel pisses you off, you're doing it on purpose when you come here. If my material and my content pisses you off, you're doing that to yourself by coming here. You don't have to be here. I never asked you to come here. So for you to show up every day and be mad at what I'm dropping, that's on you. That's on you. You got to take it up on yourself to say, you know, I just need to stop going to the channel. I don't like what he's talking about. I don't like how he be doing private rides. I don't like how he be canceling people. I don't like how he do that. I don't like that. Stay from over here. Stay from over. My channel's not for everybody. But like I said, the moment a motherfucker start trying to run their mouth and open their mouth, I know who it is. And if you're not adult enough and smart enough to walk out this room that you shouldn't even be in, knowing this ain't your home, if you ain't that smart, I'll kick you out the fucking room because you shouldn't be here. You need to find a home. And I've said that in many of my videos. YouTube channels sort of like homes with people. If you don't feel at home here and you keep coming in and trying to destroy our home, destroy the energy, destroy what we're building over here, destroy the way people are talking and hanging out and having fun, I'll get rid of you myself. I'm the bouncer. If you don't like the fact that we playing this kind of music, go to a go to a bar that's playing the music you want to hear. If you don't want to hear this music, go. Because if you just keep messing with everybody that's dancing, mess with everybody's having fun and drinks and conversation, you just mess with everybody because you just want to come in and mess with everybody. I'm the bouncer. Hey man, there's somebody who don't fit in in the club, man. He's fucking everybody. He don't fit in here. I'll get rid of him. Thanks for letting me know. That's it. That's it, man. My neighbors like that. But I, I know nobody's breaking in my house because she's so nosy. <laughs> if you don't like to cuss and stay away from my channel. Hey, Joker, man, I said that shit a long time ago. And this is the thing. Everybody remember when my channel was, I was still in the like 2000s or whatever, this and that. And it was every other comment on my channel. Man, you ain't professional. You cuss too much. You need to shut up. You need to just be more professional. You need to cuss. Let I was like, man, if you don't shut the fuck up and get off my channel. I used to tell people that shit right to their face. Like, I ain't got to fucking tuck my tail, motherfucker. This is my channel. I say what I want to say. If you don't like it, bounce. 
Now I'm almost at 9,000 fucking people. I'm almost at 9,000. Still cussing. And a, and a funny thing is, you see every other ride share channel sounding just like mine now. They say motherfucker. They say shit. They say fuck. They say bitch. Every channel says it now. It's like somebody's got to break the lid on this motherfucker so we can be podcasters. So I broke the lid on this shit. When I walked through the door, I said, I'm not being like none of y'all. All oh, y'all, well, you cuss too much. You're not going to get monetized. You're going to lose your monetization, Jeff. You're going to this and that, Jeff. You're going to, all these channels are saying that shit about me. I broke the fucking lid off and I never put the lid back on. Now they all sound like me now. Because <laughs> I told them, if it's going to be somebody who's going to take a sacrifice, I'm willing to take that sacrifice. But it's time the channels keep it 100. Time the channels keep it real. If you feel this shit in a lot of channels, oh, some people, they're just too passionate about it. They 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 got too many feelings involved about ride share. They motherfucker. If you if you get evicted from your house, I feel pretty passionate about that. Ride share can get your car repossessed. Ride share not making money can get your ass evicted from your house. If you're not passionate about that, you a dead fucking channel to me. I can't fuck with that. <laughs> exactly. I'm so mad that you're not mad. Block man. <laughs> Keep it moving. I'm telling you, telling you. So I'm and I'm one of those channels that say, you know, we have the freedom and the right to come over here and we speak. We talk like I said, it's like the barbecue. We kick back. We're not corporate. Let corporate talk like corporate. And the sad part is, is other channels like other people that do shit. They see me and they don't mind coming on my channel as far as, you know, being on, you know, an interview or something like that. I've interviewed people completely straight up, cool ass interviews. And even when I'm interviewing them. I may drop a, you know, a shit here, shit there, something like this and that, but I don't have to be too passionate about it because I'm interviewing them and I'm letting them exhibit their passion about what I'm talking to them about. They're exhibiting the passion. Now, once they're off the screen and they're doing anything, now I can get back into my grind again and speak how I want to speak. And sometimes I get passionate about it. It's just who I am. I just, I just get like that. And a lot of people don't have that, that flow. They have to stop think about what they got to fucking say like no man just say it well i don't want to say a cuss word i want to say something to offend somebody i'm old school i grew up offending fucking people i grew up being offended so it's like it's i'm still okay i'm 50 i've been offended my whole life i've been offending people my whole life that shit don't bother me i can't stand with it when well, that offends me so i prefer you not say that i prefer you get the fuck out of my face if it offends you because i'm not gonna stop saying it one motherfucker was fucking me about the whole short bus thing I wish you wouldn't say short bus. Fuck off my channel. It's like, cause if I offend you, you shouldn't be here because I don't go to anywhere that, that offends me. I don't go to those places. You don't just see me walking into a place that's, oh man, it's fucking, this shit is offending me. It's offending me. Why are you here, Jeff? If you so offended, I don't know. I just can't leave, but it offends the shit out of me. Just being here. This is so offensive. Why don't you just leave? If you so offended, I, I can't, I gotta be here. I gotta hear what's going on, but it offends me. It's like, motherfuckers are stupid, man. They stupid. <laughs> no drivers in my discord are wondering where i learned to cuss so much exactly exactly <laughs> it's like shit they just say they really do sound like you nowadays yeah i'm telling you medina that's real shit thanks kid positive energy prefers over negative and every time it's hard to soar with the eagles when you're picking popcorn with the pigeons <laughs> real shit brother real shit yes yeah, they the, what the officer Tatum and black conservative patriots are turning us complaining about Uber and Lyft as a woke liberal critic conversation. They don't understand how bad the gig is. Yeah, because what they think is they think everybody. And that's the thing about Officer Tatum and the conservative, the black conservative. They think everybody who's not doing what they do are Democrats. They don't realize we got Republicans doing ride share too, motherfucker. We're entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are Republicans, too. We're Democrats and we're Republicans. They look at ride share as a Democrat. I'm like, you you idiotic motherfuckers. Y'all got a lot of subs, but y'all are stupid as shit. You really think a career field is, is based on political? Like, are all accountants Republicans or something? No. Are all fucking pastors Democrats? No. All ride share drivers are not Democrats. All of them are not liberal. I'm a fucking ride share driver, and I'm the biggest conservative out there. I'm a Republican. Been one since 08. But when you got ride share channels who are just selling fucking narratives and selling hypes, you end up like Tatum. You end up like the black conservative. And like I said, I'm cool with those motherfuckers. I comment on this shit and everything else, too. And I don't have to agree with everything they say. I really don't. And I don't. So when they sit them and say all these people are just liberals, no, we are here getting our fucking money. We buy $60,000, $70,000 cars as an investment. I would like a return on my investment in a fair way. 
That is not a liberal fucking tactic. That's called business. So there's people who are Democrats in business. They're Republicans in business. We all in this shit, not for a loss. I don't want to buy a $70,000 car and end up in a loss where I get that car repossessed and I lose my motherfucking apartment. I end up on welfare. And I say, look at this welfare motherfucking liberal right here. Look at this welfare liberal. Well, I used to be a Republican driver until I lost my car. I lost my house. I ended up on fucking welfare. And now you want to call me a liberal because I'm on welfare. I'm still a Republican. I'm just a Republican on welfare now. People are not based on the shit you do for a living is not based on what party you in. It's all about principle. And in a Republican principle, I like less government. I always said I don't want government involved in rideshare. I don't. I don't want policies involved in rideshare. When we doing rideshare, we out here making money. We're negotiating deals. All I want is Uber, which is the part of the government, I think. Uber and Lyft should allow us to negotiate. All I'm doing is I'm taking Uber and Lyft out of my negotiations because every time they give me a shitty fare and I got to move them over to Hum or I got to do it as a cash ride, it hurts Uber and Lyft. It don't hurt me. You think me canceling a motherfucker hurts me? No, it pays me to cancel them. It hurts me to accept this ride at this low of a fucking rate and do it. That hurts me because I'm going to end up homeless. I'm going to end up losing my car as a Republican. That hurts me. So for them to sit up and say, oh, well, these people are complaining about money. They're liberals. Now, nah, I, I disagree with that. I, I fuck with them. I rock with them and everything, but I disagree with that because they don't really know the industry. Just like when people were talking about hum that don't even drive hum, don't even live in Arizona, some shit you don't know about. So if you don't know about it, you're going to sound stupid as a motherfucker talking about it. Officer Tatum, black conservative. Y'all sound stupid as a motherfucker. And I'm, I can prove y'all sound stupid just by me being me. I ain't even got to fucking do nothing fantastic. I can say, motherfucker, I'm Republican. This is what I do. This is how I live. This and yo ass will say, well, well, I'm a, I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. I'm Officer Tatum. I'm a Republican. Cool. Nice to meet you, motherfucker. I'm a Republican, too. I'm a rideshare driver. I'm not a liberal. I'm not. That's not how I rock. I don't want government. I don't believe in government. I support fucking Trump. So for you to sit and say some shit like that on your channel, I mean, if I wasn't the strong minded person I am to know how idiotic you are, I'd be like, I'm going to unsubscribe his channel. I'm not going to unsub you. I just know you're not that smart. That's all. I just know my position on your channel now. I know I'm probably a level up on your ass on some topics. That's all it is. I don't have to. Well, I'm going to unsub him because he called me a liberal. No, like my mom said, if the enemy's going to let you in, they can't read their fucking blueprints. Officer Tatum lets me on his channel. He don't block me from his channel. Conservatives lets me on his channel. He don't block me. I can see how these motherfuckers are not that intelligent. They're black people. So I, I'm, I'm black too. That's the reason why, you know, I think Officer Tatum, being a black officer during a time when we had riots and all that shit, he sold because he was a black person speaking from a standpoint that most black people wasn't speaking from. So he sold. Black conservative, a rarity, and doing Obama's era and shit like that. So he sold. And I will say most of the people on their channel are probably white, not black. But I'm just saying, because when when you sell a certain narrative to be a black cop during the time when cops are killers, but you're a black cop supporting. Co I mean, it was a narrative that was selling. And it's cool. Like I said, I rock with them. I like them. I like a lot of their the way they speak, because I speak a lot like they do, too. But I'm not going to be idiotic and say, oh, if you're a ride share driver, you're a liberal. What? I'm like, bro, that don't even make no fucking sense. That's like saying if you're brown, you're a dog. I've seen a brown horse before. I've seen brown cows. I've seen a brown bear. I've seen a brown cat. You can't just say if you're this, then you're that. And that's just what it is. You know, oh, if you're a driver, you're a liberal. No, if you're brown, you could be anything. If you're a driver, you could be anything. So like I said, I'm, I'm from a universal standpoint of knowledge. And when I listen to people like this, I know they're speaking from a place of, of selling views. They're speaking from a place of, of selling a narrative. It's cool. It just means I'm a little more intelligent on that topic than they are. And I think a lot of people, whoever watches my channel knows, Jeff, you way more intelligent than those motherfuckers on this topic. They, they're they like, you know, accounting 101 with this shit. You accounting 404. You senior level about to go to grad school on this shit. These motherfuckers, they just graduated from high school. This is their first semester in college on this shit. They don't even know what the fuck they talking about. And I know that because I do ride share. So I'm sitting there listening to their ass and I'm, I don't even want to comment on their shit. I don't even do a review on their shit because it's not worthy. I went out and made $1,300 this weekend while they was being stupid. I went out generating clients for hum. 
I went out trying to help Big Kev get fucking money. Jamil went out helping me get money. Jamil was helping Big Kev get money. We was all doing shit this weekend while these two, Officer Tatum and Black Assertives, was being idiots on the internet. We was out making money, but we're liberals. We all getting money because we know what we're worth. When you know what you're worth, that's not liberal mentality. To me, liberal mentality is to ask somebody. Can you give me, can you value me? That's the ask. It would say, can you give me section eight? Can you value me enough to pay for my house? Can you, me as a conservative, I say, can you give me the opportunity to be able to pay for my house? All I want is the opportunity. Don't give me no money. I don't want section eight. I want you to tax the shit out of me. I want you to fuck me. I don't even want you to be a government in my city. All I want you to do is give me the opportunity to wake up, eat pancakes and go out and generate how much money I can to pay for the shit I want in this world. That's all I want is the opportunity. To me, that's conservative. Liberal is to wake up and say, my ancestors was on plantation, so you need to just give me about $250,000 and we're going to call that shit reparations, man. No, don't do not do me like that. Don't do me like that. Because I don't even know if I, my ancestors were a slave or not, because 100% of the black people on this planet were not slaves. Sorry, you can't sell me that shit. 100% of the people on this planet were not slaves. How can you tell me that I'm from a slave? I don't deserve reparations so I can know what the fuck I even come from. And I have no idea. I've never researched it myself because it's not important to me. I'm going forward. I'm not going backwards. So, no, I'm one of those people who say I want to just be given the opportunity. Hum gives me an opportunity. Hum gives me. The That's why I say this app works so well with me. It says, Jeff, you can roll up and tell these motherfuckers at the airport what this ride is worth to you. And you could do it as a manual ride or. You can see a ride coming through Hum and say, you're going to be paid more on Hum than you're going to get paid on Lyft and Uber unless if Lyft and Uber is surging like crazy. But if Lyft and Uber is surging like crazy, that means the rider paid a whole lot. You can help a rider out by putting them on Hum. So it, it's always an opportunity I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a handout. I already know my worth. So you can't tell a conservative person what we're worth. We already know what we're worth. A liberal, you can say, yeah, we're opening a new position and I'll give you, how about, how's $13 an hour sound? I'd walk in an interview like, the last person you paid made this much. I'm apparently more valuable than the last person because you fired their ass and you're bringing me in. I'm way smarter than the last person. So I'm not going to sell myself short. And that's why I left corporate America. I'm not going to sell myself short just so you can get a bigger bonus for saving this department money by hiring me as a new person. I may be new to you, but motherfucker, this ain't my first rodeo. So no, you're not gonna pay me that less. You're not. You can probably pay the next person if that if all you're looking at is saving money to get you a big bonus, knock yourself out, hire somebody else. But if you want to get this shit done and you know it's gonna get done right, and you ain't gotta fucking fire me in three, then I'm your guy. But it's gonna cost you this much for me to be your guy. Motherfucker, I'll negotiate my price on every contract I ever took. I've never walked in and took the first number they threw at me because that right there is a low ball number. Same thing with sports stars, same thing with ages, anybody else. They're going to always throw a low ball because somebody's making money on the back end of giving you that number. If you walk into a car dealership and they give you a number, that number, they're making money on that fucking number because they already got it in their head. Sell that car for $38,000. $38,000, you make $3,000 on that car. For real? Yeah, $38,000, you make three Gs. So what if I sell it for $35,000? You make about two fifty. dollars We sell it as a mini. You get $250. Okay, cool. I better sell it for 38000 then. Yeah, you better. Because no matter what, you might have a negotiation where, like my Jeep, like I told the story about my Jeep. They wanted 24 for it. I paid sixteen nine. So if I would have bought it at 24, imagine the commission check that motherfucker would have got. At 24, I paid sixteen nine. Sometimes, like I said, you walk in, you know what the deals are, you know how shit is structured, you know what the work, you state your price, you state what you think is worth and you get the value for it. And the Republican Roger driver identified as a black lesbian. <laughs> Cam, thanks for the super chat, brother. You crazy. Hey, you can do that, though. This In the state we live in, in the country we live in right now, you could do that. You could be a Republican Roger driver identifying as a black lesbian. All you want. Nobody can say shit about it. Man. Did my cash ride. Made $100 for 11 miles of driving instead of 22 miles for $10 in this ragged ass apps. I'm telling you, Mel, that's what we do, brother. That's what we do. We think maximum. We do not think minimum. Anybody thinking about minimum wage, anybody think the only reason why I talk about the minimum wage in Minnesota, the only reason is to show people how stupid of a situation it has to be for these apps to say we're going to pull anchor. I don't even think these drivers are worth $15 an hour. I think they're all worth 35 to 40. That's me. I think all you motherfuckers are worth 35 to 40 an hour. But the fact that they're saying 15 an hour or we're going to pull anchor, 
that tells me right there, fuck these people, man. Fuck these apps. We out of here. Fuck these apps. They don't even pay these people 15 an hour. We'll laugh at 15 an hour where from. We laugh. It's like, come on, man. Like Mel. If Mel was making $15 an hour, I guarantee that ride he got, yeah, it would, it would be that. You would probably get $10. Instead, you 10x your money. Give me a hundred. And somebody was appreciative and grateful because you don't know where they got that money from. They might have hit a jackpot. They might have just settled a lawsuit and they sitting on, you know, 50 G's right now in the bank. And they just want to be nice and gracious to somebody they just met. Happens to be Melvin. I just close. We all settle cases and shit like that all the time. I mean, I've settled a $25,000 case when I was uh, when I had to sue the Hartford. I sued Hartford $25,000. The lady I was dating at the time, Jody, I gave her 5000 just because she was there. It's like, I just gave her five G's. Some people just feel gracious sometimes. The fact that you're just rocking with them. And that's why, you know, I love the way that we're building things around here. Even when we having clients and rides, I don't mind giving people clients because I feel like I'm giving them money. I'm giving opportunity. I'm taking care of my circle. When people are gracious, ride share is different. Like with Mel, $100. Some people are gracious. Ride share is different. The Im even immigrants are realizing that 15 hour ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, man, you funny as a motherfucker. That's real shit, though. Emory's like, $15 an hour? Do we look stupid to you? And a long time ago, I was doing videos about the immigrants, and I was saying, hey, man, we need to look out for our immigrant brothers and sisters, make sure they realize this government is playing them. I said that when, when it was all originally going down. I said that the government is playing these immigrants. We need to talk to our immigrant brothers and sisters, let them know. Do not let these people play y'all like that. And what happened? They got people over here. They kicking people out of hotels. They taking money away from people. They plan the shit out of them. They plan the and we warned them against that. This, like I said, this channel was so far ahead of the fucking curve. So far ahead of the curve. And everybody was listening and not saying shit. Not saying, you know what? You guys might be right. This government might be playing these immigrants. They might be playing the shit out of They're playing Americans and immigrants at the same fucking time. This government is on some other shit. This is the new world order level shit right now. This is something else going on where they just discombobulate a whole nation. They put our nation in complete disarray. And they're like, yeah, well, America can't really focus on nothing if we fuck it up. Right now, China has the highest, you know, GDP, the fastest growing economy. What's America doing? We fighting with immigrants and fifteen dollar an hour issues in twenty twenty four right now. Free shit, not free shit. Taxes, you know, all this money. They just they throw an America in disarray right now on purpose because that's how you take over a nation. You throw it in chaos first. Once you throw it in chaos, you got to create a rebuild. So how do you do a rebuild? You got to destroy shit. Imagine. Just imagine one day in one day, they say all immigrants, if you are not a legal resident of the United States, you have to leave now. You know what it's going to look like? It's going to look like Israel and Palestine. I remember when Palestine saying all you people got to leave the country because we're about to bomb it real quick. So everybody's got to leave right now. You know how crazy that shit looked when they said everybody right now, all you people need to leave Palestine because we're going to bomb the shit out of it right now. And it was I mean, miles and days of just people in rows trying to get out of that country because some shit was about to hit the fan. Imagine it happening in this country. Everybody needs to leave this fucking country right now if you're not a legal resident or shit's about to hit the fan. You know how backed up highways will be, stores will be, gas stations will be, airports will be, fucking bridges will be. They're telling you what's going to happen in real time right in your faces. They're showing everybody right in your face. They're doing it in test markets first, though. They'll test market it. They'll do it in a small nation. They already know got problems already. Hey, let's see how this shit's going to go. If we make everybody leave at once. What is what, what will happen? What would it look like? It's going to look like war. It's going to turn into war. It's going to be a bunch of pissed off people that don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. This is my home. I'm here now. I've been here. I ain't leaving. I'm fighting for mine. That's how it's going to look. You're looking at what's going to eventually happen in America. That's the test grounds over there. But what's going on over here? And what's Iran doing right now? Iran saying, we know something's tricky with this shit going on. Uh, we gonna take care of I we gonna take care of fucking uh Israel for y'all. We're gonna take care of this shit. And everybody's like, dude, they're they're a hostile nation trying to blow up this. I'm like, you're saying there's a hostile nation finna blow up a peaceful nation, but that peaceful nation just made all these people fucking leave and blew their whole fucking nation up. Does that are you seeing the the illogic pattern of why is Iran attacking a peaceful nation like Israel? But Israel was the peaceful nation that made all these Palestinians fucking move or say, we're going to kill all you motherfuckers and blow all your shit up if you don't leave. I don't know. I'm, I'm not following all that logic over there. So I don't really fuck with that story that much because I know a lot of people get canceled when when they, you know, say certain things that don't fit the narrative of what's going on over there. 
I don't even touch that fucking story because I think it's a, it's a shit show. And it's more than what we think it is. It's way deeper than what we think it is. We thinking it's about, you know, th- no, it, it's about banking. It's about money. It's about power, control of regions. It's about, it's about a lot of shit. Trust me. It's about a lot of shit that we ain't even, we ain't even scratching the surface. Of, so I don't even touch that shit because it's too much. People say, Jeff, who do you support? Who do you support? About? You know, I support the lack of fuckery is what I support. If they would just to tell everybody the truth about everything, we could we could really know who to support. We really know what was going on. But because I don't know what the fuck is going on and there's a lot of shit going on over there, I don't support none of that shit. None of them. Zero. You, you, or you. Support none of you motherfuckers. I support me getting my car every day and working for me. Oh, well, if you don't put a flag up on your channel, and get the fuck off my channel because I don't support none of those motherfuckers. Zero of them. None of them. Now, how you going to take that? When I don't choose a side at all, you can't fuck with me. If I choose a side, they don't fuck with me. But I know the reason why they want you to choose a side because there's a narrative going on. That's a test ground for something bigger. It's a test ground. And I already know that because America, I keep telling people, and I've said this shit before on my TikTok, America is the last stand for freedom. This country is the last stand for freedom. Understand what I'm saying when I say that shit. The final battle for freedom, it'll have to be the American people standing up for what they know is right. Every other country has given up. China's given up. North Korea's given up. Russia's given up. All these countries have given up. All these, even we saw Australia give up during COVID. Australia gave up. They already gave up all their guns and shit like that. They don't have anything in Australia. They have nothing. So all of the major nations in this world have given up. Americans have not given up. We are still the people who are willing to fight for our freedom. And I don't mean we have to kill people for it. We're willing to stand up, stand out, speak out against the government. We're willing, any other country, you can't even say shit about the government or else you go to jail for like 50 fucking years. We're the last country standing that's free and the whole world around us is like, we got to do something with them because if America keeps inspiring people for freedom, if America keeps motivating people to want more freedom, then the rest of our country is going to lose our, we're going to lose our power over our people. We're going to lose our governments. We're going to lose our communities because America tells people that freedom feels good. America tells freedom that freedom is what everybody deserves in this universe. And if that shit bleeds out too far, so what do they do? They say, well, we just need to get rid of America. How do you get rid of America? How do you get rid of this place? It's a whole fucking country. How do you get rid of America? If you know about the Aztec Empire, you know about viruses. I've said this shit before. If you know about the Aztec Empire, you know about viruses. Once the human body can't perform like necessary functions to survive no more, that population ceases to exist. So you have to do something with the human bodies first. If you want to take over the land, you got to do something with the human bodies on that land. You've got to incapacitate the bodies. The quickest way to incapacitate a body is through a sickness or an illness, a virus. Trust, I'm telling you, the shit's deeper than what y'all think it is. I would get into it, but I'm not. Because we're at the two-hour mark. (laughs) And I'm telling you, I could go on and on about this shit because it's a lot deeper than what people fucking think. You've got to be a high level. There's a lot of high IQ people on this fucking planet who think well above our pay grades, well above it. And they've already figured out in 300 years what the population should look like. In 400 years, what the they've already started working on that, what technology should be like. These are high level thinkers who have already plotted us as dead people. We're already dead to them. And so all they got to do is carry out the process to make sure they look great in the future. Because they want to look like Jesus. They want to look like Moses. They want to look like King Tut. They want to look like Cleopatra. That's who all these high IQ people right now want to. They want to think that they're those people in the future. Like people going to look, excuse me, look back and be bowing down the statues of fucking Elon Musk. Bowing down the statues of Jeff Bezos, bowing down the statues of the Rockefellers and shit like that. That's what these people want. They want to play God with this planet so they can be worshipped in the future. They know we don't give a fuck about them to that degree because they're humans just like us. They bleed like us. They laugh like us. They get married and divorced like us. They have kids like us. But in the future, these people, they're going to be legends. They're going to be fucking legends. What's up, Triple E? What up, Eric? Exactly, Hunter. We are the freest country in the world, which is why you should never let any of our freedoms be taken away. Yep, yep. I will stay here and fight for my freedom country no matter what. Real shit. That's why I avoid that COVID jab. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to tell you, man, there's a lot of people finally, finally in the in the uh, hospital industry, the medical industry, who actually had that, who, who got the shot. And they're speaking out about it. 
And it's actually being able to be put on social media and stuff like that. There's nurses who had problems that they never had before. There's doctors who passed away and their families are finally coming out saying he was fine until. And this we weren't allowed to say this shit in 2020, 2021. We weren't allowed to say it. It's 24 now. And people can now speak about a truth that really happened on this soil. You never see the news media talk about it because the news media encourage people to go that route. And if you encourage people to go that route and they do that shit, you're culpable for it. I think you're culpable for it. You have to pay something because you encourage a lot of people with a lot of fucking narratives. You're leaders of information. You're leaders of narratives. And you you made all these people do some shit that you didn't even know about. But you were paid to tell all these people to do something. And now you just want to wash your hands from it. Oh, well, you know, it wasn't me. Why do you think all the news anchors from all these different agencies got fired? Did that is that not ironic? All these news agencies fired all of their anchors that were out during that time frame. They all got their own networks or they're all on a different network. They all got fired for some reason, put on different shows and different podcasts because they know this person is our link to the fuckery. This person is our link to our corporation telling all these people to do this. That person, we need to get rid of that person, find some reason, get rid of them. Because if they're sitting here, somebody's going to put two and two together and they're going to make us couple for what that person told them. They got all this old video, all this old footage. So if they want to sue somebody, they're going to sue wherever that person is now. They ain't going to sue us. Wherever that person is now, that's what they're going after. I'm telling you, man, it's just a lot of shit. Real shit. Pure blood too, brother. Pure blood do something different. Pure blood. And I even said they were trying to make people's kids do that shit. Well, he can't come to school unless he gets it. I'm like, well, my kid's not coming to school then. I could teach him shit in my garage. I mean, I'm a degree to count it. What don't I know? I know how to add. I know how to spell. I know how to research shit on the internet. I'm an auditor. So anything he wants to know, I can pretty much help him figure out and find out. If we want to do math problems, we could do this shit right on the internet. There's math courses on the internet. Why does he need to go to your building to be considered school? That's like saying somebody has to go to a church just to worship. You can worship in your house. You can worship in your car if you felt like it. You can sit up under a tree outside and pray. You can sit up on a mountain like a monk and fucking pray. You don't got to go to this church to do it. Just like you don't got to go to a school to learn. Learning is all around you. This is energy and air and atoms and opportunity and everything around us. You can learn wherever you are. So to tell me in order for me to gain knowledge, I have to go into that building or else I won't be that smart. No. Nah. Not true. That's why I say degrees don't mean shit. A degree just tells you where you've been for four years, what you did for four years. That's it. What courses you went through. It doesn't say whether or not you're more intelligent or not. It never says that. It just says you have a degree. In what? Accounting. Are you smarter? I guarantee if, if, if I took business calculus right now, I bet I would do worse than what I did when I was in college. So does that make me smarter because I have a degree now? I would do way worse in business calc right now because I don't remember none of that shit. I really don't. I don't know no calculus. All my chemistry classes I took, I have no idea. I know AU is gold, FE is iron, basic shit like that. But other than that, I would fail chemistry. But I probably aced that shit when I was in high school. So no, none of that shit made me smarter. It really didn't. Because otherwise I'd still be that smart right now. You don't retain all knowledge. But a lot of experience you do retain. So what schools do, like a lot of people that are homeschooled, and rich people that got homeschooled kids, their kids experience life. Experience will teach you something. Touching the stove and learning that is hot is way different experience than somebody telling you that stove is hot. You may not know how hot. You may not even know what hot is. You might be thinking maybe it's a little warm, but in the experience of you touching that stove and you feeling how hot it is, you now understand what that means when you see that stove and you see that red light on. You don't have to be told. But I could tell you over and school tells you shit. Life will teach you shit. The experience is way more. That's why I say college was a good experience, but it didn't really teach me shit. I was already smart when I went in. When I came out, I was probably equally as smart coming out. I just I just experienced different shit. That's all it is. I just experienced something different. Now I know a lot more in life through accounting and life. And everything. I have an experience now to where you could take somebody who made straight A's in college, straight A's. And put them against me as far as running a business right now. And I bet I fuck them up because I got the experience. All they have is the degree. That's it. And I'll say, hey, OK, you got the degree. I have the experience. Today, we're going to give each one of you guys a thousand dollars. You got to start a business with that thousand dollars. 
I'm gonna kill that college kid. They have no fucking idea what they're doing. My thousand dollars by the end of the day will probably be about four thousand by the end of the day. He said, Jeff, what the fuck you do with that thousand? First thing I did is I went and I sports bet a parlay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did a four to one odds fucking parlay. Two teams, motherfucker. Triple my money. <laughs> I'm smarter than you, goddammit. <laughs> See, my, my oldest cousin is 79 in July, and he's doing well. He came last week and went to the barbecue. I don't think he got the jab. I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, I lost the business, so that failure showed me what not to do. The next time, it's on. Exactly. And the same here, Drew, the same shit. Look at it. Ridiculous, Miss Alicia's back. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Once you go through an experience of failure, you kind of learn what not to do. You know levels of tolerance. You know level of tolerance at that point. When you have a degree and you just got school and book knowledge, you don't know the degree of tolerance yet because life hasn't taught you that. And you will think, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm... Same thing with like, let's say marriage counseling. Marriage counselors have a marriage counselor certificate. They've got certificate, the college degree, the education. They got everything possible for them to know everything there is about a marriage. They know it through the book, front to back, chapter one to chapter 10. They know it all. But those motherfuckers be having like three divorces. How are you a marriage counselor with three divorces? Because life is different from what's in that fucking book. That's why you're a marriage counselor with three divorces. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, life is different. Book is one thing. That's that, that'll, that'll show you shit. It'll expose you to some shit. But life will teach you some shit. It'll teach you that that book don't know what the fuck it's talking about. What's real is what's real. That book is good for exposure. It'll brush over a couple of topics, maybe. Sure. But life is real. So that's why I tell people. I look at people who have a lot of experience, energy. I look at energy. I look at experience. I look at things way differently. Somebody come up. Yeah, I graduated, you know, top of my class. I'm like, cool. Get in the back of the line. Motherfucker, I don't know what to fucking tell you. I mean, you're not going to be using that degree to get ahead in this real world. This is a real world shit. But we have to use that as a as an organization structure. It's kind of like we say people with degrees should be offered the job first. Has anybody with a degree ever embezzled money? Has anybody with a degree ever been fired from a job? Has anybody with a degree ever just completely fucked something up to where the company lost millions of dollars? Lyft with their extra zero on 50 to make it 500. Has anybody with a degree ever done some heinous shit to, to send a company into a tailwind? So you can't tell me just because you got a degree, you should be put in the front of the line. You can't tell me that. Experience teaches you everything. I will ask you, you got a degree yet? Have you ever fucked up a company? Yeah, well, one time, you know, I got caught for embezzling. I served five years, but I served my time. Okay, you got a degree? Yeah. Well, one time I fucked up some financial statements. A lot of people invested a ton of money. Then the company got sued because they said it was fraudulent reporting it. So you telling me having a degree doesn't equal you're the best person for this position, which is why I never liked the if you have a degree, you should have the position shit. I never liked that. I never liked it. Even when I had a degree, I only got it because they said I was going to make so much more money. All it did was give me more responsibility. I think I made less money because I was working 67 hours a week in corporate America. I think I was making less per hour because I was salary where they fucked me up. They was giving me salary and I should have been paid hourly. So I get time and a half, double time, all that shit. Is that it's giving me, I'm a degree to count it on salary being paid less than people who make an hourly with time and a half. And they don't even have degrees. Who's the idiot? Why you think I walked away at 38? I'm not that stupid. I'm really not. You trap me with a degree. You trap me with a salary. But everybody that works for me, they're all paid hourly, very good hourly. We come in after hours, they're all paid time and a half. They pay checks looking bigger than my paychecks. Only difference is I could take a day off and not pay for it. But if they got PTO, they could take a day off too. But at some point, people on salary got to realize if your salary ain't exceeding X amount of dollars per hour, don't do the normal 2,000 hours a year, double that, say 4,000, because you might have to work double time in some instances. So 4,000 hours a year. Now, if you want to make $100,000 and you're working 4,000 hours a year, you're not making that much because that's $100,000 divided by 4,000 hours. So if you want to make $50 an hour as the greed person, that means you need to be paid at least a minimum of $200,000 a year to do what you're doing because you're going to be working some double time, some overtime, some triple overtime, some vacation time, some no fucking break time. You're going to be working about 4,000 hours a year. So if you don't want to do that at $100,000, don't take that position that requires a degree because they're going to pay you $100,000, but you can be pushing a whole lot of fucking hours for $100,000, which ain't shit. It ain't shit. Ask it for $200,000. Say, I'll do it. I'll take the salary, but you got to pay me $200,000 to do it. I'll, 150 minimum. $200,000, you give me benefits, 150, cool. 
But if you're telling me $100,000, but I got to work 60, 70 hours a fucking week, yeah, not happening, not happening. Because people be like, ooh, it's sound like that Uber shit. Ooh, I see a $36 ride. They do that big ass number out there, $100,000. Ooh, I see a $36,000 a $36 ride. How many miles is it? 90? <laughs> it's like, yeah, exactly. So it's 180. Man. Says, Jeff, you have an accounting degree, I have a finance degree. Here we are doing rise to profit boy. That's right, Mel. I'm telling you, man. That's right. And, and a lot of people don't get it. They don't get it, man. And we try to expand that knowledge to everybody. I'm going to find something right here. Hold up for a second. Where, where's the ship one? Dang it. Where is it at? Where is it at? I know he put it in here. Yeah, but there's that's like, you know, what we tell people all the time. Oh, here it is right here. When you use a degree and we tell knowledge on the Internet, we're giving people all this knowledge. This is for them. This is some shit Juan sent me the other day. This motherfucker right here. This is the kind of shit that most people fall for. $213 to drive 197 miles. 213 Juan sent me that the other day. $213 to drive 197 miles. Now, that's three and a half hours. So that's seven hours minimum. Seven hours minimum you're driving. Because you know you're going to stop, drink, piss, do everything. Seven hour minimum there and back. And that's almost 400 miles round trip. So about 400 miles round trip, over seven hours for $213. That's a lot of fuel. That's a lot of fuel. Even if you drove an EV, how many times did you have to stop and charge that motherfucker up to make it over 400 miles? And you have to sit there for hours. And you have to hope you don't run out in the middle of the desert. But you have to stop, fill your tank up. You have to fill your tank up and everything else. Eat, pee. Probably rest and relax because driving seven hours straight through is, is pretty rugged. You probably already been driving that day. And I don't even know what time that was at night. Shit, what time was it at night? Let me go see. Because I'll tell you what time it was. Because it came through at, oh, what time was it? What time was it? It was 10.18 p.m. So this ride hit his phone at 10.18 p.m. So he had already drove all night. Now you ask me to do another seven hours of driving. It's 10, 18 p.m. By the time you get to them, it'll be about 10, 30, 10, 40. And then you got three and a half hours that way, three and a half hours back. That's not counting few. So you're talking about making it back at about seven or eight in the morning, seven or eight o'clock in the morning. And all they're going to pay you is $213. I can make that same 213 just driving in circles around Phoenix. I could just drive around Phoenix and make that 213 and not even go nowhere. But it takes somebody with, with financial background thinking, like Mel said, take somebody with financial background thinking to say, break this down. Should you take that $213? They throw this shit out in your face. $213. You've been seeing $11 rides all night, $7 rides all night, $14 rides all night, $213. Are you thinking, that's the number I've been going for, man? I've been trying to hit a $200 night, man. They putting $200 right in front of me. I could get this shit done in one shot. Damn. Yeah. But you got to drive seven hours round trip. Two tanks of gas to deal with this shit. That's not the $200 you was looking for. That's not. You're looking for the smart 200. Like Melvin said, you got to drive for profits. You got to do the smart 200. Don't do the big 200 because the big 200 is going to fuck you. Melvin just did $100 for like, what, 10 miles or something like that, you said? So you do two of those trips like that. You didn't drive seven hours to make 200 bucks. You drove maybe 40 minutes, an hour to make $200 because you did two of those Melvin rides back to back. You made $200 in less than an hour picking up private rides, doing shit the right way, doing shit the profitable way. You made $200. You still home. You only drove for about an hour. This motherfucking pigeon right here went $213, got $213 for going three and a half hours that way, gassing up, tired as a motherfucker because he'd been driving all day, didn't show the back up. So Billy Proctor's in the building. What's good? Hey, Billy. Hey, you picked up a, uh, your first ride. Your first hum ride was this black dude named Wendell because I picked him up from the airport the other day. He, I took him up to Scottsdale. And he was like, hey, man, yeah, he said, dude, this is my second hum ride, man. He was like, uh, the first dude had a, a white Escalade. I was like, oh, that was Billy Proctor. He was like, yeah, that was his name. <laughs> so you picked, and I dropped him off at the airport, actually. I think he picked you up from the airport. I mean, you picked him up from the airport. I don't know. 
But yeah, you was his first. Yeah, Scottsdale's a big stomach ground. I'm finding that out. Oh, yeah. You guys be up there. 11 miles, but I provide a great service. I was rewarded. Exactly. So you got that hundred dollars. If you would have, if you would have said, I don't want the hundred, I'm gonna do you like I'm gonna do the app rides, like the dude that me and me and Bighorn Kev met the other day, the one who takes all the rides. So he sat up there, he would have took this 213. He would have took the 213. When you would have been like, man, just get a, do private rides and make a couple of hundred bucks doing private rides. I mean, I made 70 going from airport to airport. I made $70. Then I just got rides all the way back. There's no way in hell I'm going to do $213 to, I mean, go over six, 700 miles. What was it? 300, go about almost 400 miles, 400 miles to get $213. Because I showed a clip on my phone last week, I drove for Lyft and I drove 552 miles for 1300 552 for 1300 this is about 400 for 213 400 for 213 213 dollars i drove 552 to make 1300 i'm telling you man a lot of these pitches they don't see it what up robin what up hey we were talking about you at the meetup last week robin so everybody's excited to meet you i told them you were going to come out here i said hey robin she's going to come out from western arizona she's like yeah bring her on out bring her on out man i got something in my eye i hate when that happens shit yeah, I took him from Scottsdale. Yeah, I took him there from Scottsdale. He his first uh his first ride, my first ride with him. Oh, there you go. Hey, well, his name's Wendell. His name's Wendell, man. And I picked him up and he he remembered you, man. He was happy as hell. He was like, Man, I thought I was VIP. I saw this big ass white escalate. I walked and I was like, damn. I was like, Yeah, that's Billy Proctor right there. <laughs> no, he says, he says, Man, I'm pretty sure that guy at the meetup the other day was at home was an Uber plant. Yeah, he probably was. He probably came to find out what go find out what they're talking about, man. Go see what they're talking about. Download the app and go see exactly what they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. It's like, ain't hey, motherfucker, we'll tell, and I have no problem being open and being honest with what Hum is doing. Hum is not doing anything that's secretive. They're doing something that's lucrative. It's not secretive, it's lucrative. And it's necessary. Drivers need this. And if other apps saw what Hum was doing, it would force other apps' hand. Because right now, the only thing forcing apps' hands are protests, negative press. That's the only thing making them do shit. But even when they do that, what do they turn around and do? They take more money. Oh, yeah, we're going to leave. Uh, they said they're going to leave May the 1st. We're going to leave May the 1st now, but we're going to leave July the 1st now. But what's happening on May the 2nd? On May the 2nd, everybody's cash out rates are jumping up 50%. The fee increases by 50%. So even though they're not leaving on May the 1st, the fees are still jumping on May the 2nd. Everybody's cash out fees are going to go through the fucking roof. So instead of you paying, you know, 85 cents or whatever you'll be paying with a dollar 25 now something like that so you do 10 of them instead of you paying eight dollars you're paying like almost 11 now that's how they're going to get people that's it so they're not leaving they're not paying drivers more everything we do is forcing their hand when you bring another app on deck you bring an app that's paying people talking about it everywhere not just in arizona because it's fucking local it's local no you talk about it to everybody because the apps see everything and when the app see drivers getting paid, the app see people being happy and excited about a new app, a new level of energy coming to the rideshare game, what are the apps going to do? We need to make sure these drivers don't leave us. We need to make sure apps like that don't end up in our regions too. We need to make sure, how are we going to do that? We need to start paying drivers better. Put better bonuses out there. Bring the quest back. You know, say we're not going to charge them that much to do cash. Out. Do whatever it takes, but man. When everybody starts talking about hum and people start seeing what hum is doing to ride shares, energy and morale and market and, and just pockets, we don't want that shit to be infectious and, and infect every fucking market because then Uber and Lyft is going to cease to exist. Riders are going to say, we want to pay the driver 100% of the money. Riders say that. Riders want to give us 100% of the money. So when I'm sitting there doing right and I'm telling them about how Uber and Lyft takes more than 50%, a lot of times we're only getting 20, 30% of the money. That's We get that a lot. 30, 40% of the money. These riders be like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, they damn. So I'm like, yeah, so the money you paid, the $34.99 you paid, I'll get $12 out of it. No way. Yeah, you paid $34.99. I'm going to get $12. I didn't have, you paid surge pricing because you were where you were. I didn't get a surge with that because I was where I was. So if I was in your area, they would have used the driver. I would have had surge. They would have had to use the driver, driver with surge, which means I would have been paid less or they would have been paid less. 
So when I'm sitting there trying to explain to people why they're paying so much, because I'd be like, where you were standing was a surge in area. That's why your, your fares were so high. Where I came from, three miles down the road, I didn't have surge three miles down the road. So you got sold a surge ride, but I didn't get surge pay. That's why there's a huge disparity, $34.99, when normally you probably pay $20 or $24, and I'm sitting there getting $12 because I'm getting half of $24. I'm getting half of the original. So I'm getting $12. You paid $34.99. I could have canceled that shit and probably try to go somewhere to find some surge before I took another ride. But sometimes when I had to do that quest, I was like, I'm going to knock this quest out. Be done. This is my last ride. I'm out of here. But that's how they do it, man. What up, DDS? This is when's the last time you heard an app ask you, what do you need from us to make you successful? Build your business. Hum was doing that this Saturday. I'm telling you, Billy, that's what me and Kev was talking about. And it's Billy. So many people was jumping in my comments about that last that last video I made about people not talking about Hum and talking about how excited we are. And that it's a solution for the Roger industry and shit like that. We want it to spread to other fucking states. People got pissed off. Well, that's because it's local. That's because nobody knows how to use it. That's because, and one guy was like, oh, well, I went to Hum and Hum's not all that. You guys can't, and this is, I'm serious, Billy. I'm dead fucking serious. I left his comment on it to show how idiotic these fucking people are. These little haters out there. The dude said on the comments, he said, you guys don't set your own rates. It's already preset by Hum. He said that shit. I said, no, there's a rate card with Hum, but motherfucker, we set our own rates. <laughs> it's like, I can tell somebody 50 bucks if they say, okay, I just do that shit as a manual ride. What the fuck do you mean? These are people on that comment, on that video. Hum's not all that. It's just like Uber. It ain't no different. Uber's better because Uber surges. Uber surges. So that, how is Uber better because Uber surges? So when Uber surges, Uber pays, Uber uh, finds, it, uh, charges this person more money. They charge this person. So let's say Uber surges and gives somebody $85, makes somebody pay $85. They have to pay $85 because it's surging right now. What do you think that driver is going to get out of that $85? $35? $40? Because normally the person might get $20, but they sitting on like a $10, $15 surge. All right, cool, kid. Go out there and get it, brother. Go get it. Do a ride along, man. Do a, do a screen record ride along for it. And, and let us see what you're doing, man. You could be the first hum ride along video. Like, yeah, we got one on Kev's channel. But so the person is paying. And this is why I was laughing at that dude's comment. Well, Uber surges, Lyft surges. Well, that's because they can charge people surge pricing. They're not paying you shit still. Surge is nothing. They drop the fare down to about 20, 30 cents a fucking mile. And then they put the surge on top of it. Everybody knows surges for drivers don't really exist. It's bullshit. When we're doing rides from concert, getting $27, $27 to go 20 miles because we got a surge. That's what we get normally. $13 to go, you know, nine miles because we got a $6 surge. That's what we get normally. So don't sit up on my motherfucking videos. I'm like, well, Uber and Lyft surges. That's the best thing about them. You're not getting a surge any fucking way. So it's not a best thing. They're charging these riders up the ass with that surge pricing. These riders are paying $34, $35. We mess around getting $12, $13. I'm like, man, look at that. I had a $22 surge once and, and uh, Scrooger lost $17, $17. I got a gotcha bitch and Dave Chappelle person. <laughs> I lost $17, $17. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, Drew. And, and the dude left the comments, so I was laughing like a motherfucker. Like, either he don't drive or he don't know how to drive. Maybe he does drive, just don't know how. So to sit up there and say, well, home's no, no different. It's not actually better. It's actually worse because they don't surge. I'm like, hum don't have to surge. I could do 10 rides on hum. 10. Guaranteed. I could do 10 rides. The minimum pickup is $5. So I'm getting $5 just for picking the best for the motherfucker getting in my car. How many $3 rides are out there for Lyft? How many 262 rides are out there for Lyft? I'm on minimum get five. And that's just for picking them up. Then I get 25 cents a minute. Every four minutes, add a dollar. If I go one mile, add another dollar. So I went one mile, four minutes, I'm at $7. $7 for one mile and four minutes, I'm at $7. I go two miles. So now I go, I got $2 because I go two miles. Six minutes, I mean, four minutes turn to eight minutes. So I get $2 and $2. So now I'm up to $9. I'm up to five. Two and two, nine dollars. 
I've only drove for eight minutes so far and I went two miles. So I went two miles. I've got eight dollars in nine minutes. Even with three dollars surge on Lyft to go two, three miles, you're getting five dollars. You're getting five sixty two and you're going two miles with a three dollar surge on your phone. The person is probably paying nineteen dollars and you're getting like six dollars for this shit. And they just paid nineteen for it because they're paying surge pricing. How is surge any better? It's not. Be it's better for the apps because the apps can charge the people up the ass. And people think, well, I'm getting more for the ride. You're getting more for the ride, but you're not getting what the ride is worth. You're not getting what it's worth because you've allowed yourself to be taken so cheap, so fucking pigeon like you're so cheap that you think six dollars for two miles is a good play when we're getting nine dollars for two miles with no surge at all. If you went with no surge on lift for two miles, you're only getting three dollars and some change. But you sold yourself so cheap, you think $3 of some change is good. You think $5 is now good for going. When we got an app that says for that same distance, we'll pay you damn near $10 for that. No surge at all. We'll pay you like 10 bucks for that. No surge at all. For real? No surge? No surge. Damn. So I'm getting nine on here, but on, on uh, Lyft, I'm only getting $3.62. That's a whole damn near $5.40 variance. So when this guy's in my comments, oh, Lyft ain't no better. I mean, Hum ain't no better. I looked at the rate cards. It's the same thing. Only good thing about Uber and Lyft is they surge. You guys don't even surge. I'm like, you don't know math. I mean, you're a simple-minded motherfucker. You don't know math. If you add up math, how many times does it surge for you to get the surge? When you drop people off, are you dropping them off in surge? Most of the time, you probably want this is a really short ride. That's why I don't do nature hikes. Nature hikes will take you out of the surge all the fucking way up somewhere. And guess what you got to do? Turn around and come back. So you just doubled your fucking mileage. But I got surge. I got surge, man. I got $1.15 a mile. I got surge. But yet, you really didn't really get $1.15. You really got like 60 cents because now you got to come all the fucking way back to the surge. So the miles you went, is the miles you now have to go again. So you just doubled your miles, doubled your time and everything else. The money you just made just got cut in half, exactly half. So don't throw that, well, they surge as an excuse to say, well, Uber and Lyft's better because they surge. Understand, surge is sucker fucking bait. That's all it is, it's sucker bait. It tells you, we're gonna give you 10 bucks. I don't care if you give me 10 bucks. How much are you charging this person? That's what I'm really concerned about. How much are you charging them and how much, am I getting 70% of what you're charging them? Because I guarantee I'm not getting 70% of what you're charging them. I mean, I'll show you what happens when, when you do a ride that has surge. Well, the rider paid surge, but we don't get surge. I'll show you what happens. Let me see something. I'm going to go back to see activity. I did a ride yesterday that was kind of like that. Uh, let me see. Where is this ride at? And then he tipped me like six bucks afterwards, which was cool, which was pretty cool. Uh, where is this ride at? Five, 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 seven, fifty one, three, six, seventy five. Here we go. Bam. So this is a guy I picked up from the airport. Now, my upfront pay was I'm going to screenshot this so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, the only reason why I did it like this is because I had a um, I had like a challenge to fuck with. Whoops. There we go. Damn it. Yeah, I had a challenge that I had to deal with. So this trip here, let me open this shit up for you. You know, I'm just going to do like this. It was 19, It was 12.36 was for that ride. I ended up getting $19. I was going to blow it up so you could see it better. Because I hate when it's small like that. Hold up for a second. Here we go. Let's open it up. Okay. So up front was 12.36. That was up front. He gave me a six-something dollar tip. So up front was 12.36. Remember that number. Up front was 12.36. Now, as you can see, the... Ah, here we go. The distance was 13.62 miles. That was the distance, 13.6 miles. So it was less, less than a dollar a mile. Remember, I told you it's 12.36, less than a dollar a mile. And the guy gave me a tip for 6.75. Remember this, I'm telling you, remember this. You're going to love this shit. I'm going to tell you, and this is what happens when people tell me, oh, well, Lyft and Uber got surge. That's what makes it so good. The dude paid surge pricing. You know why he paid surge pricing? 
He was at the airport. I was north of the airport. I didn't get surged. Twelve dollars. Remember, the fare that I got paid was twelve dollars. That's what I got paid. Twelve dollars. This dude, he paid thirty three dollars for that. Thirty three dollars. Lyft. The Lyft fee. Lyft got twelve dollars and fifty one cents. Lyft got twelve dollars and fifty one cents. I got twelve thirty six. So Lyft took. $8.88 for insurance. They took out of the 33, they took $8.88 for insurance and they took $12.51 for themselves. I got $12.36. So Lyft took over $20. They took over 20 out of that. They took over $20 out of that 33. And I got $12. Out of that $33 he paid. This is what, and it was surging. That's surge. That's what surge does to people. It made him pay 33 and I got $12. Uber took, I mean, Lyft took 20. The only reason why I got paid is because he tipped me. He tipped me that 19, he tipped me that $6 to make me $19. I got 12.36. Lyft took 8.88 plus $12 and like 50 cents. So everybody got paid more than me. If he would have not tipped, if he would have not tipped, I would have got $12.36 on that. And this is why I'm saying is the dude was in my fucking comments. The benefit about Uber and Lyft is they surge. The benefit is they surge. No, the surge is not for us. I said this shit earlier in my live stream. The surge is not for us. The surge is what they can charge these people by saying, oh, it's busy. Supply and demand. That's for the apps. We don't get shit out of it. How did the, he pay 12? He paid $33. I got twelve thirty six. If you wouldn't have tipped, why didn't I get any surge money out of that? I didn't get any surge money out of that because I was just north of the airport doing a drop off at a hotel. They pinged him. I'm like, I gotta take this ride because I gotta go south anyways. I took that ride. They should have said, since we're giving you a driver that doesn't have surge attached to his phone, we're not gonna charge you thirty three dollars since we have a driver that doesn't have. Surge. They didn't say that shit. They said it's surging right now. This is the price right now. Pay it. And what they do, we're going to find a cheap ass driver around here who's going to take this fucking ride. Me, they called me. I had to get south. Wish I would have had surge with that when I went south, because if I'd have had surge with that, that ride would have been probably $25. If I'd have had $10 surge, it would have been $22. I got 19. I got 19 to go to 13 miles because he tipped me at the end. But this is how surge fucks over drivers. It fucks us all over. It's not good for us. It's good for the app. It's not good for us. But... People sit up and go, oh, yeah, man, but Surge is helping me out. Surge is good when it's a super short trip. 13-mile Surge, I need a $15 Surge. If I was getting a $15 Surge on that trip, I would have got 20, 27, plus you to tip me six. So I would end up getting, what, $33, $34 for that. So I would have got $33, $34 for a trip that he paid $33 for, and then everything would have been fine. Yes, Connie was good. And on top of that, I would have sat up and told people right off the bat, you know, if you see Surge out there, save it. Paw Patrol that shit. Harriet Tubman that shit. Do whatever you can do to save it for a short trip. Because I'm sitting there saying, what happened? Are we live? What happened, Jeff? I don't know what you're talking about. We're live. So I'm sitting there looking at how these apps are, are playing people when they start throwing Surge. The Surge is the charge drivers. When they charge these drivers, oh, it, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. The only difference, we can go do hum. We could do hum. Say, wow, long string, yeah. Yeah, man. Like I said, I'm, this is what, 232, so I'm going to end up hopping out because the last one dropped. This one started running, but I was supposed to only do a short stream because I'm going to come back on later. I just wanted to do a long one. Loop, loop. I don't know what's happening. Is, is somebody messing with my live stream or something like that? Is it not going? Because on my screen, it says 232. I don't know what that is. But I was going to end it anyways. So I'm going to end up ending this stream right now. I appreciate you guys for rock with me for the second stream. The second, I was just, you're good. I don't know what these people are talking about, like the stream is looping or something like that. I don't know. But say we live now. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. But I was gonna have to get off the stream anyways because I'm I'm coming back on later. But I'm coming back on Streamyard later because we gotta I gotta get Big Kevin and all these guys on, and we gotta discuss the weekend what happened this weekend. But I'm finna go and get me something to eat, man. 
Oh, thank you, Miss Lisa. Hey, everybody go jump on that Ride Share Lisa Discord. That's her name right there, and that's the Discord channel right there. It says Ride Share Lisa on it. Anything you want to know about delivery, they be out there getting these catering jobs going. This is the next. I'm telling you, we got to stick with each other. We got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. Appreciate you do some. Hey, I'm going to go check my email, too, while I'm in here cooking me some breakfast. Yeah, it's 530, and I'm just making breakfast because I spent the morning with y'all. <laughs> Man, but hey, I appreciate you guys rocking with me. I'll be back in a few hours. Like I said, I got to eat. I got some shit I got to rip and run and do, but I want to come back later on the live stream, actually sit down with a few drivers so we can really go over hum and how we're really doing it. Because like I said, we're the only channel talking about it. We're the only channel that's going to talk about it. But we're going to keep everybody hopeful on how to keep building and developing their business. So when hum does get to your region, you already ready for it. You're going to be proactive. When all these other channels are going to be behind going, oh, well, how do I, how do I, how? you ain't going to look at Jeff's live streams? You ain't going to look at that? No, no. Yeah, I'll be back on YouTube later. And everybody's going to be like, oh, you ain't talk about, you know, you ain't going to watch Jeff live about it. No, I never watched it because it wasn't in my region. Short bus, fucking short, but you should have watched that shit already. You should have been proactive. They was talking about it. Nobody else talked about it. Man, that's it. That's it. All right. All right, Miss Alicia. See you, wifey. <laughs> she's funny. She's funny. She's like, hey, that's, that's my girl. Like, what, 2005, 2006? I'll shoot you a text. I'm going to go here and make me some breakfast real quick, but I'll shoot you a text or whatever. And I'm in Phoenix market right now. We're going to end up going later on live stream on uh stream yard because i want to bring in kev and everybody else because we got some shit to talk about this weekend we got some shit to talk about all right y'all peace i'm gonna hit y'all up in a while we'll be back at it i'm gonna lead a i'm gonna end the stream but the chat will still be on there because i don't close the window down so if you guys got to chat back and forth you can still keep chatting but the stream will be ended i just don't want to run the stream because it looks weird as shit but i'll check y'all in the later man we're gonna do this